I don't want to be working. part of your problem. All right, be mute. Solution. All right, can you, you, we should be streaming now, so let's see. Good evening. We are getting set up. I just want to make sure everybody can hear me. Hey, Jazzy, what's up? Hey, Baba. Yes, Stavro. Hey, Billy Dub. In the club. Yo, can you guys hear the music? You can, right? Start your show now. Go check, check. Five seconds. Four, three, two, Everybody can hear the music, right? Just double check. Hey, Michael. It's been a crazy day, guys, today. I do apologize. <laughs> I've, up I've updated the, uh, the Smoke Free Radio... Um YouTube URL. So if you're on Smoke Free Radio, you can just hit play on YouTube. And then the guys that are on YouTube, just one more. I'm going to get ready here. I'm waiting on Phil to get back to his battle station. What's up, Chris Johnson? Hey folks, <laughs> what's up, Phil? It's my line. Yeah. Hello, my fellow vapors. Hello, my fellow vapors. Hello, my fellow vapors. Good evening. Welcome to another episode of uh, the Smoker Show. Uh, just give me a little check, my. I just want to check your level there, Phil. Give it a check. Check one, two, one, yeah, two. Yep. Yeah. Yep, yeah, buddy, I got you now. Yeah, yeah we're cooking with gas. 
So yeah, I've been uh, working on this uh, this uh, flavor study all day today, and it has been crazy. And sometimes, you know, I just, uh, I just, I just want to quit, Phil. Sometimes I just want to quit. I mean, people I, just, I, I, you know, this industry could... just wants like self gratification instantly. You know, I know. And I know. Uh, and uh, look, you know, we're trying to do something to help. For crying out loud, if you, I mean, if you guys can, you know, something. Uh, I'm not even getting get into it because this is the smoker show, and we want smokers to quit smoking, and we want them to vape, and that's what we're all about, right? And, and they don't want to hear your drum and your bullshit, no, right? They don't. They don't. Yeah, watch your language. But I tell you what, uh, listen, anyway. I, I know, I know. I will, I will speak for you on your behalf here a little bit. I, I know you have been in in a rather cranky mood. I know you've been uh, having a lot of a lot to do with the uh, the survey and the survey not coming out yesterday. Me included, bugging you as to when the link uh, is going to become available. I got a little nasty gram from Dimitri himself yesterday. See, I'm I'm susceptible to. I get it too, guys. I really do sometimes. So I'm being very nice to you tonight. I'm going to yeah. be very nice to you. I'm not going to say anything bad. I'm not going to. I'm not going to do any hey Google tonight. Yeah. No, I I really don't mind. Actually, like that. I enjoy having more fun than I do trying to be serious. Because every time we try to be serious, it seems like. Hold on. I just confused Google. Hey Google. Hey, Go Google. to bed. Oh God. Hey Google. Hey Google. Oh Jesus ah. Christ! What a what a what a what a disaster! What's up, uh, uh, Scott? Nice to see you, buddy. Oh so, you know, I, I, I just, I just, you know, I just want to let everybody know. Uh, <laughs> <Stop. laughs> I can't make this up, I swear. <laughs> I, I, I just want to let everybody know on a serious note that there is a flavor study that was released today. Um, uh, we'll have it in the link description. Uh, I'm sure that, uh, that Bill Tarling will put it in the chat as well, too. Just copy and paste it in your browser. It takes 15 minutes, 10, 15 minutes to do it. If you're in the US, in the US only, and only one per IP. So if you're multiple people in the house, turn off your Wi-Fi on your phone. Boop, 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 boop. Click it 10, 15 minutes. It won't take you long. And uh, I mean, do it in the crapper. Do it while you're vooping. Uh, but just do it and get it over. I mean, it, it, it's not the most... It's not the per most perfect software, but that's what you get from the FDA. I mean, the software is outdated. It's 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 it is what it is. You know, it is what it is. So, yeah, so and uh, by the way, my uh, my video on that is rendering right now. Uh, hopefully, it'll be you know in time for me to to publish tonight. Uh, and I'll be talking uh, about the survey. And I actually I did a very special interview with a very special guy who happens to be uh, right over there right yeah, now, yeah. right there. That's that guy right there. Um, Dimitri joined me for, you know, a little bit more information about the survey and look for that video tonight and uh, share it, guys. Take that survey and share the video. You're going to you're going to see this survey being pushed a lot by not only myself, but other YouTubers as well. Yeah. Very important that we do it. Yeah. Very and it's, and it's fairly it. it's fairly easy. And I understand that not all the questions like people are, you know, just busting my chops because they use multiple devices. Well, guess what? So do I. Just pick the one that you use the most. That's what the question says. You know, what do I use? I use a regulated device of 16 watts. That's basically what I use. It's one of the answers, right? Yeah, you can use a box and a mech mod and a pod system or whatever. You can use a variety of things through, throughout the day, like I do. If you look at my desk now, it's a mess. But what do you use? Your what is your go-to device today that helps you stay off cigarettes? That is the question. Just, hey, by the way, uh, Bill Tarling just posted a link, and that's not the link that you gave me just recently. Oh wait, there we go. Now he posted the new link. Okay, yeah, I, I give it to you in a Bitly format. So okay, so that's that's the one that's going to be in the video. So right, I hope so, that's right. So so you won't be confused. But anyway, yeah, All right. that's not here Welcome. or there. Welcome to the Smoker but Show. Welcome to the Smoker Show. Yeah, first of all, we want to thank our sponsors, and they are Joytech, Inikin, and Five Ponds. And let me take a breather. I'm just going to play a really, really quick video for everybody. Uh, this is, uh, of course, um, talking about sucralose and liquids, which I found very, very interesting. I didn't want to ever take shortcuts. It all stemmed back to when we were developing flavors from the molecule up, and I knew that flavor needed to be about flavor complexity and tasting different flavor notes. The shortcut or the easy way would have just been to take three flavor ingredients, throw them together, and then dump a bunch of sweetener into it and, and call it a day. It's, it's about flavor, and Five Ponds is a flavor company. I've been passionate about that since day one. It's tasting one thing on the inhale, something different on the exhale, having something continue to linger on your tongue. I look at artificial sweeteners as I would a good steak. It's like 
you go to Ruth's Chris or you go to a, a good steakhouse and you're not gonna take a good steak and drown it in A1 sauce. Um, a good steak should be able to stand on its own and should be able to just have a little salt and pepper to it. I don't feel that there's a place for sucralose or stevia in any premium e-liquid product. I went further and was able to achieve a balanced sweetness that didn't give people vapor fatigue or was so overpowering that it didn't allow you to taste the individual flavor notes. The things I don't personally like about sucralose might not be the same things that other people don't like about sucralose. Um, I don't like the taste um, that it gives. It's artificial taste. It leaves a film in my mouth um, and it masks flavor complexity. Um, the other thing I don't like about sucralose is the fact that it's really been known to gunk up coils very quickly. Five Ponds um, has been very diligent since day one in making adult flavor blends that are intended for adult audiences. And of course, along with Five Ponds, Inik and our Joy Tech, our two main sponsors, we certainly appreciate, and the Vaping Advocate that sponsors the telephone lines, which are 215-383-5752. Today, we are going to do a Q&A towards the end of the show, so keep that in mind. You can also follow me on Twitter, at Vaping Creek. My handle is right below there. And, of course, feel right below him as well, too, at P. Busardo. I am monitoring the chat on the YouTube channel and, of course, Smoke Free Radio as well, too, for any questions or comments. I played that right off the bat, feel because I want to do something a little bit different than what we've done in the previous shows. And I want to talk about flavor, since we do have that flavor study. Sure. You know, I want I want to just discuss for the smokers out there how important flavors are because if you if ninety nine percent of the times that I talk to a smoker, the first thing that comes out of the mouth is I want something that tastes like a cigarette, right? And I think that goes for probably the majority of the people, especially people that have been smoking for a very long time. And I get it. Yep. Th there's absolutely no way that you're going to find something that tastes like an ashtray. I mean, like 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 an authentic burning right. cigarette. You'll find tobacco flavors. I find some really good authentic tobacco flavors, tobaccos and stuff like that. That'll be sufficient for you to get started. But you're not going to be able to replicate that dry smoke, smoky ashtray taste that you get in a burning in a cigarette. Right. So if you're a and go ahead. I, what I want you to explain is if you're a smoker. OK, so if you're a smoker, Phil, you know, how do you explain to them? How do you explain that first critical two week transition into vaping when it comes to the flavor that they're actually vaping? Yeah. So, I mean, I, I was the same exact way when I started vaping back in 2009. Uh, I was I wanted something that tasted just like my Marlboro Light. That's what I wanted. Well, guess what? Nothing tasted just like my Marlboro Light. And it's a very hard thing to recreate because, like Dimitri said, there's nothing burning. There's no way. I mean, remember that burning paper is part of the flavor that you get from a traditional combustible tobacco cigarette. And there's really, a, 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 there's, a, it's very difficult to recreate that. But, like he also said, there are also some very, very good tobacco flavors on the market. Um, you know, when I started really early, there weren't many choices. So I was using like Decang uh, tobaccos uh, and then some tobaccos from Halo because they were kind of like the second players, uh, especially here in the States. But now we have a lot more. And I think the, the best thing to do um, for the people who are trying to transition is to find a good similar flavor, something that you're used to, something that you're comfortable with, right? So, uh, you know, go to a vape shop. A vape shop is a great place to go for you to sample uh, all of those flavors and try a bunch of different tobaccos and find one that, that you like, find one that you find satisfying, find one with a, a strong nicotine uh, content, right? Because your goal should not be first to, I want to drop my nicotine down to nothing, right? Because it, it, it's an unrealistic goal. And I think you're not going to be as successful as if you started off with a higher nicotine, right? You yeah. want to get that nicotine in, in addition to sure. the satisfaction. Now, but what you're going to find out is as you are vaping, things are going to start to come back, your sense of smell, your sense of taste. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and hopefully it will be that point where, you start experimenting with some other flavors because 
you know, when I started vaping, I, I couldn't imagine, well, why would I want to smoke a, a smoke, right? Smoke. Why would I want to smoke a watermelon? Why would I want to smoke a peach? That just doesn't make any sense, but it will, it will in time. And it's those flavors and those choices that have kept me engaged, that have kept me off of the traditional tobacco cigarettes and have kept me excited. You don't want to use the same flavor for too long a period of time because just you get something called vapor's tongue uh, and, and you start to lose some of that flavor, right? So switch it up. And, and because of how this market is right now, because of how this industry is, you can try a new flavor every day and never get no through doubt about that. You know, right. I, I, sometimes we talk about, you know, what the most important part of making the switch. And that's what all this show is all about. But I wanted to spend, look... <laughs> Whose idea was it to do pod reviews? I mean, look at this. You're not going to have a shortage of devices uh, to get started. Trust me. You're not going to have a shortage. The hardest part of you to transition to vaping will be trying to find a flavor that you can uh, at least be able to stay off cigarettes at the beginning. But like Phil said, the importance of having a variety as your flavor buds open back up and you start discovering all these flavors is extremely important for you to maintain to stay off cigarettes because if you don't have a good flavor if you don't find something that satisfies you you will go back to cigarettes there is no doubt in my mind and whatever that flavor is okay that's just a little parenthesis side note here don't be embarrassed whatever it is if you want to continue to vape an ry4 if you want to continue to vape a tobacco if you want to continue to vape a simple vanilla if you want to continue to vape Fruit Loops or a cereal flavor or a candy flavor or a Sour Belts flavor, it, it, that is okay as long as you're not smoking. So the, the most critical part of vaping, in my opinion, is the flavor aspect. That's why it's so important that we have to continue to have the variety and the abundance and the tasting possibilities that you, you're yeah. able to go to a shop to taste them. And you know what? I totally agree with you, Dimitri, because I find it much easier to recommend a product or a device to somebody than it is to recommend a liquid. Now, if they're using a specific device, I can recommend the type of liquid, like thicker, you know, higher BG or, or higher PG or maybe a salt nick or something like that. But it's always very, very difficult to recommend a flavor to somebody. And here's why. Uh, we say it all the time. Taste is subjective, Right. I love Brussels sprouts. There's probably a lot of you out there that hate Brussels sprouts, but Brussels sprouts all taste pretty much the same way, right? But how come you hate them and I love them? Well, that's it's going to work the same way with flavors. A lot of people like the anise flavor, the licorice flavor. I find it incredibly offensive. As a matter of fact, I don't call it anise. I call it anus. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. Yeah, that's a pretty... Right? So taste, taste is absolutely subjective it really and is. it's really up to you to find the flavor that you like. So, you know, I mean, getting my wife to transition was a challenge. As you can imagine, she has access to like pretty much any vape device she could possibly want, but it was finding that flavor for her. Uh, and until she found that flavor, she was not ready to quit. She was not ready to transition. But once she found that flavor, she hasn't smoked cigarette since. I, I'm right. glad that you brought that up there because there is a question in the chat that uh, what are your okay. thoughts about people that are dual using and how do you get them to stop smoking and stick to vaping? And I, I'll start it off and I know Phil's going to take over from him because he's been into that situation personally with him. There's absolutely nothing wrong with dual using. If it takes you a week, if it takes you six months, if it takes you a year, right, Phil? doesn't really matter. Whenever you're ready to make that switch, you need to find the right device, the right liquid, and most importantly, Phil, you, the, you, right you, the right flavor, and you need to be ready to do it. You need, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, that, that's one of the reasons why, you know, I, I, although we are going to be giving kits away during the show, right? I think there's something to be said for the person who goes out and spends the money themselves on the hardware, on the gear. Uh, here's a perfect example, okay? Um, my gym membership back in Rochester costs $8 a month. Well, at $8 a month, I don't go to the gym as much as I should go to the gym, right? Now, if that gym membership cost me $100 a month, I'd have my ass there every other day, right? So I, there, there's something to be said about making the own your own investment and, and making that commitment, but you have to be ready to quit. Some people just aren't ready to quit, right? Yeah. Uh, but, but you know what? I, I do... The one thing that I recommend for dual use, like for the, for those people who they have this like this craving for the cigarette, I have to have the cigarette at this this certain time. Here's something that I've recommended a, a lot. Okay, go out to a vape shop, find yourself your favorite tobacco e liquid, right? Wh whatever you your favorite one, get it if it's available in like an 18 or a 24. 
okay? Something really, really high nicotine and have it in its own tank all by itself on the side somewhere, all right? So go ahead and vape your fruity vape or your vape, bakery vape all day long. And then when it comes to like, I got to have that cigarette. Here's something you could try, right? So take your tank and unscrew your fruity and your bakery and sit this aside and screw on your really high nicotine tobacco. Screw that on. That is now your cigarette. That's your cigarette. So use that, get satisfied, get your nicotine. And then when you're done, when you've had your cigarette, unscrew your cigarette and screw in your fruity, delicious bakery flavor, whatever it might be. Even take that tank and label it cigarette, right? Do whatever it takes. Do whatever it takes to kind of psych yourself up. So, I mean, there's a lot of tricks like that that you can try that you can use. But just remember that the longer you are dual using, the more, the less likely you will, you're, you're going to successfully, you know, trans for over to vaping completely. transition yeah i i, I want to get back on this flavor thing again once a little bit more i want to dive into it a little bit deeper from a smoker's perspective because the industry has shifted i mean we've seen that with with the with the flavor study even today you know when we went through the questions of your your, your flavors you know in 2014 when we did the survey it was tobacco fruit bakery and today the list was like 10 different uh, options however if you're a smoker and you're coming into this industry today, if you're trying to vape today, the liquid has changed tremendously in the last three, four years. Okay. So, you know, some of the more popular liquids that are out there, especially for the advanced vapor, or I will, I will call it the uh, the hobbyist vapor, if you want to call it that, they're, mo they're mostly higher VG liquids, very low nicotine that do have an amount of sweetener inside because that's what the industry demands. You know, this is what vapors want to vape. And after you've been vaping for two or three years, you might find the desire as well, too, to have a sweeter liquid. But now, as before a you go any further with that, Dimitri. Why is that? Why is that type of liquid out there? And why would that type of liquid be considered a hobbyist brand of liquid? Well, because it's a higher VG, lower milligram nicotine that needs a lot of power in order for it to put out the flavor that you're looking for. And since right. most of these devices transitioned in the last two, three years into the higher wattage and the higher power devices, the liquids were adjusted as well. The nicotines had to drop. The VG had to go up in order for it to work correctly. So as a smoker, I can see how it's going to be very, very challenging when it comes to the flavor aspect. You're going to go somewhere, you're going to find a flavor of Fruit Loops or something that's, that, that tastes really good, but only comes in three and six milligram nicotine. So that's going to cause a problem to you, even though the flavor is good, you're going to be vaping it constantly where eventually you might get tired of it as well too, or you get dehydrated or you dry up. There's a lot of side effects that go that uh, along with it as well too. So be a little bit conscious, even when you go into a vape shop, to be able to ask those questions of, hey, do you have something that has a little, that's got a little bit more, less sweetener, something that's a little bit higher nicotine, something that's going to satisfy you more. And again, I'm not saying this that it's a bad thing, but the truth is that this is what's going on with most of the most popular liquids that are out there. So you have to make, you have to make a conscious, an, an educated decision when you're a smoker transitioning into liquid to try to find something that's going to fit um, and assist you and, and help you. Right. Uh, quit. Right. And, and you know, like Dimitri said, you, the, some of the, the more popular uh, brands out there, some of the, the hype liquid that you're going to find, uh, they're only going to come in zero, three and six. Okay. Yeah. And, and, and six may not be enough to satisfy a transitioning smoker. They're also going to be extremely high VG. What does that mean? Uh, that means they're, they're formulated to make more clouds. Okay. They're right. formulated to make more vapor. That's the purpose of that. Uh, but it, it's also not going to carry the flavor as well as a higher PGE liquid is going to. Okay. So what does that mean? That means to get the flavor out of it, you kind of have to hit it with more power. You have to hit it with a little bit more heat to kind of bring out the flavor and the nuances of the liquid. So that's why it's really important to keep in mind that depending on what kind of hardware that you're using, it really is important to match the liquid that you're buying to the hardware that you're using. Right, Demi? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, And, and that's going to determine a, a, a great vape shop from you know a, a shop that you shouldn't be in there. Those questions that we talked about in the previous episode, in the previous episode, please go back and look at the replays to be able to answer the right questions when you go in there to determine what type of vape shop you're in there. I can't stress it enough, guys, and I sometimes sound repetitive when I talk about flavors because I know that when I started vaping with the very limited amount of flavors that we had at the time, I struggled. I struggled because I had found one liquid from China. It was a sour apple from decaying, all PG liquid, that I absolutely loved. And 
when I got into the community, because in 2010, 2011, I started getting into the community, there were, there were companies here that were making liquid in the United States. Very, very few, all online. You couldn't go into a shop to test them. So I got into it. And people said, oh, you got to try this liquid. You got to try this liquid. You know, I was watching reviews. Phil was doing juice reviews. And a lot of people were doing juice reviews because we couldn't try them at the shops, right? So I would look at a review and uh, they would say, oh, this flavor is fantastic. So what I do is get online. And I'd order, and I, then I order a sample pack from this world too. I get like a six, you know, five meal bottles or ten meal bottles of sample pack, and they would come in, and I would try them, and they all sucked. <laughs> not, not that they sucked because of of the quality of or the flavor. For me, for my taste, they sucked. And I went back to my sour apple, right? And then I, at one point, I you will not. At one point, I had one hundred and seventy five bottles of liquid that I could not vape anything. And at the time, what I did is I passed them on to friends online and would exchange, try to try new flavors and all that. And, and I felt like I was doing something wrong. That's what I felt like. I felt like I, I was a little bit embarrassed even for the community because if somebody says, hey, man, you know, Phil's Love Juice is the bomb diggity liquid and I ordered it and I didn't like it. I feel I felt I felt like I let them down for telling me, and then I, I feel I, I left feel down as well too. Because do you understand what I'm saying? So don't be find that flavor, whatever it is, and don't be embarrassed to use it. Uh, first of all, Phil's Love Juice is delicious. By the way, <laughs> that's number one. Number two, um, I was in the same boat you were, right? I mean, the the only places that I ordered from were the places that had sample packs. So I w- yeah. would order one large bottle of something that sounded interesting, and all the sample packs that they had. Yeah. And back then, for me, remember these guys? Oh, Bogue Cardamizers. I, I found uh, some. Actually, my wife brought some from uh, from Rochester. Uh, Bogue Cardamizers. So every flavor would go in its own Bogue Cardamizer. And then I would have these these plastic bins with these little separate little compartments. And then I would label them all of all the different flavors. And I would have all the different Bogue Cardos with all the different flavors in these little plastic compartments. Oh, boy, what a pain in the butt that was. But... You know, it really allowed me to to go through and actually use and vape the different liquids and and, and identify my favorites. And like Demi said, a lot of times you order that sample pack, you like nothing. You like nothing out of that sample pack. Now, much easier because we have the benefit of the vape shop and we can go in and we can try and we can talk and we can experience the flavors. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree. It's it's just something that you're going to have to deal with, unfortunately, whether you like it or not. It's just part of it. And, you know, listen, vaping is a constant you have to work at it it's not easy you have to work at it even with the advancement of equipment that you have now you still have to find that right flavor my biggest concern at the time is since we ordered online is not to run out of liquid i remember one time i cut it really really close and i started to go into a panic mode you know because you you have to plan in advance of how much liquid you're going to need what if you lose a bottle what if you drop something you know you always have to have a backup I learned those lessons pretty quick, and I can see. I mean, I I will, I fell into it like really really passionate. But if you don't, you know, if you weren't as crazy and and you know gadgety as we were, I can see how it can be challenging. I I I get it. I get it. So just hang in there. And this is the advice that I would tell to all the vapors that are trying to get their smokers friend to to transition over. Find that right liquid. Find the right device and pair them up. And don't be embarrassed no matter what you are using, whether it's a device, a liquid, as long as you're not smoking. And I think that's the most important lesson that we can give you yep. as, as two experienced vapors that are trying to get in 2018 more people to vape. I'd like to answer a question that Beth sure. has. Um, Beth is saying that her husband has uh, absolutely no interest in vaping. Any advice? Um, what I would recommend to, to you, Beth, is, is kind of what I did with my mother, kind of what I did with my wife. Um, first of all, I had product for them. Okay. And I, I didn't force them. I didn't push them into anything. I just had that product there for them. Um, and I would switch up the product and I would switch up the flavors. Hey, honey, please try this. Hey, mom, please try this. Um, but what I did was I explained to them this. I love you, mom. I love you, baby. I love you. Right. And, and I want us to be around together for a long time. I want, I want my mother in my life for a long time. I still want her to cook all of my, my holiday meals because mom's a good cook. Dimitri can uh, attest to that, right? Um, I want my wife around for a long time. And I just say that it's important to me. Uh, it's important to me that you do this. Uh, and it's important to me because it's, it's a healthier way for you to get your nicotine sure. than these other things that we know are going to kill you. 
right? Sure. So I mean, that was kind of that was kind of the 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 method that I took, and you know, maybe that's something that that can work for you. Hey, you know, if you really cared about me and you know what I want best for like us together and us together for a long time, you would at least take a look at this, okay? Yeah. I, I want to be I want to be together with you for a very long time, and at the end of the day, if it's just. Uh, just shut him out of the bedroom for a couple months. That'll, that'll show him. <laughs> that'll, that'll give him a little lesson. <laughs> Say, no, yeah. you smell really bad. You can't guy, go sleep on the couch for a couple months. That's going to work. But yeah, <laughs> listen, the partnerships are very, very hard, especially when a husband vapes and the woman smokes or vice versa. It's very, very difficult. I get it. And, you know, we, especially when you vape and you see the, and we're going to talk about that today in the slides, which is very, very important. You see the benefits that your body's having and all that. And you're like, oh my God, I'm feeling so much better. How can you not see that? Well, they can't. They don't know what you're feeling, you know. They can't. So the more you push, the more you press, the more they're gonna back. Especially women, they're gonna they're they're gonna like, ah, you know, I don't, I, it's just too much. So give them give them the space, give them the time, and hopefully they'll be able to come back and um, and and you you're gonna be able to to help them uh, get along. That's yeah. why we keep toning the flavors, 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 flavor, flavor, very very important. Now with the vape shops, you can go try try out a few things. And, you know, hey, listen, that's the beauty. Of it. That's why we need vape shops. Go out there and find the flavor that, that works for you and to, to be able to transition. Um, anything else that you want to add, Phil, on that particular uh, subject? I, I think I think it does. it. I think that does it. You know, it's, it's you know, it's patience. But I tell you what, and you're going to see this in the slides, uh, some of the benefits that you're going to get from vaping when you make the transition and how quickly those benefits happen. If you can get your loved one or your significant other or your uh your domestic partner like Dimitri, right? Uh, if you can get them past that like one to two week mark where they start seeing the changes, yeah. where they start feeling the changes, right? Um, it, 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 it's easier at that point. It's easier at that point. And what I really like about uh, some of these, these slides that we're gonna go through that were created by Alpha Liquid is it's a way to almost like measure your progress, right? it's almost like like Weight Watchers. When you lose a certain amount of weight, they give you a gold star and you feel all good about yourself, right? It's kind of like that. And I think it's a really, really good idea. Yeah, I, I do want to answer one question from the chat and I, I, would, I want to touch on one more thing while we're at it. The question is, there's a rumor that uh, that dual use, using is worse than just smoking health-wise. Is that just a myth? That is absolutely a myth. But what's not a myth is that when you're dual using, it's better for you. The, the data has proven that it, once you continue to smoke, even if you're dual using, you're pretty much doing the same damage that you're doing as when you're if you're just smoking. So it's not worse by any means. You're cutting down, that's a good thing. And, but you need to continue to cut down, okay? Because if you continue to dual use, you're still smoking. So you know the difference between smoking 10 cigarettes a day and 12 cigarettes a day is is non-existent. Yeah, if you go from 30 cigarettes a day to two cigarettes a day, that is a huge, huge improvement. But it's still your body intake and smoke. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to clear our body from that, that carbon monoxide that we're inhaling with smoke. In a couple of weeks, you want to clear your lungs out. And the best thing to do is not to smoke at all. Okay, so that yeah. is a myth. And I think I think maybe that the, that myth comes from, you know, when you hear like, I shouldn't use the patch and smoke at the same time, right? Yeah. Uh, and I think that's because the patch, the patch is giving you all of the nicotine that you need, Right. And if you're smoking on top of it, you're getting that nicotine on top of the cigarette nicotine, right? right? With vaping, if you're smoking, well, then you're just smoking. And then if you're vaping, well, then you're just vaping. It's right. not like you're compounding right. uh, the amount of nicotine that you're getting, right? right. Uh, one more question that I just kind of picked up here is uh, I want to try uh, so, uh, uh, nicotine salts, but pods are expensive. Uh, Chris is in the chat, the ZFO, and you can go. they have refillable pods. You can just buy a bottle of uh, salt nicotine and just refill your own. That way it's not that expensive. And we're going to do a future episode on pods uh, as we get into it a little bit more. I do want to bring up one more thing uh, to explore here while we're talking about flavors. One of the beautiful things about vaping is that it is enjoyable. It's enjoyable to us, okay? So if you see people that are advanced vapors that are vaping some of the higher wattage devices, some of the you know the more powerful tanks, sometimes it's simply for the flavor, okay? And that is absolutely fine as well too. You know, I have seen a lot of people, especially in the last couple of years, that do use a high power device with a very, very low milligram nicotine, even zero milligram nicotine, just to get you know that flavor and to get that cloud. And then they pull out of their pocket a smaller device or a pod system with a higher nicotine just enough to take their intake nicotine inside as well too. So don't be, there's no right or wrong way of vaping. Even if you start 
vaping now and you quit smoking and quickly you find yourself in two or three weeks using maybe a sub ohm tank a little more high power tank just because you enjoy the flavors and you enjoy doing it constantly there's nothing wrong with that that's the beauty about vaping i sometimes sit down here i got a little sub ohm tank here I'll take a few puffs of my strawberry malt in three milligram because I really, really enjoy the flavor. And then I'm going to put it down. I'm going to pick up my higher nicotine device and take a couple puffs to take the intake nicotine inside too. So don't, what I'm trying to say is there is a distinguishment between two, but there's nothing wrong with doing both at the same time. Right, Phil? Absolutely. I, you know, I could even mention something else that, uh, that people are using uh, flavors for. You know, you find yourself like this really rich, delicious chocolate malt something, Right. Uh, I know people who are using that for weight control. Yeah. Uh, instead of having that snack at night, they're grabbing their sweet, delicious e-liquid, right? And they're they're getting their their sweet tooth uh, off on on that liquid, right? So I mean, th that's just another possibility there. You know, the, the flavors and the the aromas. That's what we hear, you know, in France a lot. Aromas. You know, this could be used for so much more. Um, than, than just not smoking, right? There's a lot of potential uh, with this product, and I would like to see all those potentials explored. We got to get past the FDA first. Yes, yes, we do. We do have to get past the FDA. And make sure that the flavors are around. All right, uh, let's let's expand a little bit today. I want to. I want We were in uh, in France this past weekend, and if you didn't see uh, our adventures on Phil's channel. Go watch the France video. It is hilarious. There's a lot of it's funny kind of parts funny. on it. Yeah. What I found again really, really concerning is that people. I got messages. People said that we set we we like we set this thing things up, and nothing in that video was set up. Absolutely, everything that you saw in that video completely happened. In Did fact, you really say there's stuff set up in there. Welcome to vaping. So, but I do <laughs> I, I do want to bring I, I do want to show you something. I have the ticket. <laughs> I have the ticket from the toll. To just show you, okay, there's Sanef. That is the. There it is. That is the. Um, the number. <laughs> look, the dreaded can number. you see the number? Look at that number. That entire number is what she wanted me to read. Look at that. There's at least 25 numbers on there. This is the actual ticket that we were putting in, and it would just wouldn't take it inside the machine. But I did. I did hold it for a memento, a little souvenir. But go watch our France video. Uh, so we were in 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 uh, Lille, France this past weekend. We attended the VOP Expo, and. Um, Really nice event, big haul. A lot of people uh, went through. Uh, I have known this company for a very long time. Alpha Liquid actually been in business for about 10 years now. I've seen him multiple times. We saw him at the vape event in New York a couple of years ago with Phil. Uh, talked to their marketing director, and we actually got me to meet one of the owners on this trip as well, too. And, you know, it was very, very odd for us because they actually offer 70% PG liquid today in 2018 in, in, the, in, in France in the shops. And trust me, you will not go into any event in the United States, any, and find 70% PG liquid. Nowhere. So I just caught our eye, and we started talking to them about, about you know, their, their direction and why they're doing. They do have hobbyist lines as well, too. They have two or three advanced lines with higher VG to match for the market as well, too. But their bread and butter in today is still the high PG liquid. So we had a pretty good interaction with them, Phil. I mean, wouldn't you agree? It was just really interesting to hear the mission and and to hear the, the way that they're doing things yeah we actually we actually spoke with them at the hotel first is i mean we've we've known alpha liquids for a while um we talked with them at the uh, the hotel first and that's when they clued us into some of the things that we were doing uh talk to them more at the show and then finally we said we got to share this with people especially if they're going to be willing to uh to share their slides and the little uh, pamphlet that they had um, and, and, uh, so we did, we recorded them in that video. I see, uh, uh, Bill has linked up the video in the chat. Thank you, Bill. Um, but, uh, we actually have that, that pamphlet. I know Dimitri converted it into something that we could share with, uh, with you folks in the show. And it's just, it, it's, 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 it's refreshing. It's refreshing because they are really taking a, how do we get people off of cigarettes approach how do we do it with vaping? How do we keep people engaged and involved? And can we give them something other than the device and the liquid? Can we give them something other than this to walk out of the shop with, right? And 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 measure how they're doing, right? Yeah. And see what they're doing for themselves as well. And I think I thought it was just terrific. This is basically like a vapor support handbook, right? Um, and they're, they're taking the approach of when you go into a vape shop, and it, it, they, you know, they take your blood pressure, they, they check, you know, they ask your medical questions as well too, how you're feeling. And all they do is they collect that data 
And what they do is like after a couple months of you not not smoking, you come back, they gather data again, your blood pressure and stuff like that, and they send it to your own doctor. And the reason why they're doing that is to open up a door of communication between the vape shop and the medical um, uh, community because there is a big gap there. You can't go from a surgeon down to a vapor and have that connection. So what they're doing is they're sending the data, what they've collected for the medical community to, to see is like, oh, hold on a second, this person two months ago, you know, had blood pressure issues and this and that. And now two months or six months later, we're seeing that that they're feeling much better and maybe there is something to vaping. And eventually, hopefully, the medical community will embrace it and start to recommend their patients a little bit more. Yeah. So. No, yeah, I, no, I, I just wanted to pause here for a second. I see a, a comment in the uh, in, in the uh, the chat and uh, Michael Cunningham is asking about Nick Saltz. OK, and I always smile because that is the question that I get more than any other question yeah. of vaping right now. What do you think about Nick Saltz? Um, should I use them? Shouldn't I use them? And I really think that we've talked about Nick Saltz in wow. the past shows, at, actually at length, right? Yes. Um, and I think we we eventually need to have here like a show just kind of dedicated to Nick Saltz. And I think we should sure. do that and bring in a couple experts uh, on the subject. Okay. So uh, do we want to touch on Nick Saltz or do we want to get to the pamphlet? And save I think Nick I think we can wait for the Q&A at the end if we have time. Yeah, good. If we have time, because we've got quite a few things to 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 show. Yeah. But I do want to get into this pamphlet. And listen, if you want a copy of this, uh, tweet me or send me an email, madgreek, M-A-D-D-G-R-E-E-K at Gmail, and I'll forward you this. You can. We've got permission from Alpha Liquid for you to adjust this no matter how you seem fit. In any language, wherever your vape shop is, this is why I invited vape shop employees and, and owners to come in and watch the show tonight as well, too. But this is mostly important for the smoker. So even you as a smoker, you can just pause this and write it down in a booklet. You don't even have to have the booklet. Just write it down because it's going to give you a lot of tools to be able to assist you into your journey of completely quitting smoking. Right. And I, I was just, and, and I really, I really commend Alpha Liquid for doing that, for allowing that. Right? I yeah. mean, you know, they they created a tool that they want to see, you know, benefit the smoker and benefit the industry. Right? Yeah. Uh, and I think that's terrific. And they said, yes, absolutely, take it, take our logos out, change it however you want right. it. Um, uh, and I think that's terrific. So I commend them for that. So I'm gonna I'm just gonna go ahead and get started. Uh, feel here. This is the um, uh, the English version, and and keep in mind a few words are a little bit you know off, but that's how it always uh, goes when we're translating these. So this is a pamphlet. This is for new vapors, of course, and Alpha Liquid uh, accompanies you. You can change, like we said, all this to fit your company or uh, you know or or whatever. If you're a distributor, if you're a vape shop, or whatever it is. But if you are a vape shop employee, you should be really listening now and take some of these pointers down. Yeah, and, and before you do that, go back up, go back up, because that's important right there, what they're saying right there. Alpha Liquid accompanies you. So what does that mean? That means Alpha Liquid is there with you. They're there with you for your, your transition into vaping, and they're there with you along the way, where they want to help you along the way. And I think that, that says a lot again. Sure, and, and, and keep in mind as well, too, let me just, uh, let me just uh, take a little parenthesis here. Keep in mind, too, that when you go into a vape shop, they bombard you with him. If you go, it depends on the vape shop, but usually they bombard you with information. Like you're there for 30, 45 minutes and they just feed you like charge and feel and this and that. When you walk outside the vape shop, you've forgotten most of it. I mean, we all do that. I feel forgot what he had for lunch today. He had to message me just so I can tell him. So I, I, what I'm saying is that this is a great tool if you can give it to the vapor to have with him for after sales support if your shop is closed, if they can't, if they have a question in the middle of the night, so they can track their progress, it is basically holding them by the hand when you, the vape shop, are not available there for support. And I, I just think it's just, I just think it's just a fantastic idea, and I'm really, really excited to bring it to you guys. So, yeah. uh, this is of course the English version. Just a little bit of contents inside here. It tells you what the pages have and what each section does. I'm sorry, my. My mouse is uh, having some issues. It's okay. So your, the, the, even your mouse is having issues. Yeah. So well, I mean, everything is working. So don't jinx it. Um, so Phil, yeah, you know, it, it, this is, I think, one of the most important parts when you're a vapor and when you're a vape shop owner or a vape shop employee to try to understand more about your customer and you as vapor to understand exactly at what point you are in your life when it comes to smoking and what you're looking to do. Right. And so this is something that Dimitri and I touched on earlier. It's like, you know, you got to be ready to quit. You got to want to quit. You got to be motivated to quit. So what this part does, this motivation test is it allows you to gauge 
your willingness and your urge and your desire to to leave those cigarettes away. Right. So, and, I mean, and that, no, what I'm saying, it matches points based on your answer. So there is no wrong answer. It's like you're not going to win anything by by altering. <laughs> you have to be completely honest with this because right. these points will get will guide you further down to what exactly you need. Right. And you can see there in six months time, uh, where, where do you think you're going to be? Are you still going to be smoking just as much? Have you cut your cigarette consumption down? Uh, I'll have cut my cigarette consumption down to 50 percent or 70 percent. You know, I have stopped smoking altogether, you know, and that's three points. Right. Uh, yeah. Then you go to your physical shape. Do you feel in good physical shape? Uh, do you feel exhausted. Are you out of breath? Um, you have health problems uh, and you think it's time to, to quit smoking. So, again, you know, it, it's it's going through and it's assigning a point to, you know, and basically at the end here is you add up all of these points and it gives you an idea of how how much you, you know, you're really dedicated to to leaving the cigarettes behind. Exactly. And then further down, when you get to the to the actual what the points mean and what you need, you'll see it. There's another uh, test here that you have to do, and this is called a dependency test. And on this one, they want to see how basically how heavy of a smoker you are how dependent you are on tobacco currently right now so again you can score anywhere between zero to 11 points i smoke my first cigarette when i get up you know within five minutes which is usually what i used to do i i find it hard not smoking in places like if, if i'm not allowed in the plane for eight hours can i can i make it and so forth and so forth i smoke within an hour after waking up in the morning per day i smoke up to 10 cigarettes 11 to 20 and so forth and so forth I need to smoke when I feel stressed. I smoke when I'm ill and I have to stay in bed nearly all day, which I pretty much answered yes to all these when I was smoking. Mm -hmm. So then you add all your points as well, too. And here's where you get the results, right? So, Phil, touch on this, this motivation test based on the scores that we're seeing here on the screen. Right. So you see score zero to two. For you, vaping is a pleasure or a new experience, not something to help you stop smoking. OK, so, you know, that could be the enthusiast who just wants to blow a cloud. Uh, you know, the guy who just wants flavors or the girl who want, just wants flavors. Um, it, it's for those people. It's not about quitting smoking. It's about just vaping. Pleasure right? principle. Yeah. Yeah. Score three to four. Uh, you aren't particularly motivated. Stopping smoking isn't your priority, but you're beginning to think about it. Now we get to some more uh, interesting areas here. Score five to six. You've decided to stop. Make sure you don't give up, right? Don't give up. Make this happen for yourself. Score from seven to 11. You're really motivated and your chances of success are high. What did we say before? If you're not ready, chances are you're not going to succeed. If you are ready, if you are motivated, chances are you will succeed. You will want to do this. You will want to keep up with this. Uh, to give you an example, back when I started in 2009, um, I was extremely motivated to quit. My father had a heart attack. There were issues of, of heart problems in the family. I did not feel so good. I'm, I'm, I'm overweight. Okay. I still am. Right. But oh, you're fine. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Um, you know, there was that motivation there. And if I can quit in 2009 with the liquid selection and the hardware selection that we had back then, you can absolutely do it today. You can absolutely do it today. You have to be motivated and you have to want to do it. OK, but like I said, if I can do it in 2009 before these were even around, OK, you can do it today. And guys, I I, th I think I would have fallen into the 7 to 11 category when I tried e cigs as well. Too. I was at the end of my rope. I just wanted to quit. I was ready. So I think in that category, I would have uh, 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 I would have gotten 7 to I would have won <laughs> whatever the winning was in that category. But I definitely would have been up there between the 7 and 11 for sure. But that just basically lets me know that, hey, I am ready to do this and I should commit to it. I should really put all my effort, put all the time and educate myself to make vaping work, which is really, really important if you want to be successful. So we're moving on to the dependency test field. Right. So score zero to two. You are not particularly dependent on nicotine. Uh, you could try vaping using a liquid with nicotine strength of three mil milligrams per milliliter. So basically what this is, is, is kind of figuring out where you are as a smoker and how you can take that and you can convert it over to vaping. So score three to four, you're slightly dependent on nicotine. You could try vaping using a liquid, a liquid with a strength of six milligrams. Of course, these, these NIC strengths are going to really depend on the, uh, the, the equipment that you're using. 
Uh, score five to six, you are moderately dependent on nicotine. Using a personal vaporizer will increase your chances of being able to stop smoking. You could try vaping using a liquid with a nicotine strength of 11 milligrams. Uh, and then we go from seven to 11 again, you are heavily dependent on nicotine. You can try vaping using a liquid teen with a strength or, or a liquid teen. I created a whole new product there. Yep. Uh, liquid with a nicotine strength of 16 to 19 milligrams per milliliter. Okay. Yeah. And you'll so, notice that it, it maxes out at 19 point what 20 there because this is the EU and they have a 20 right. milligram cap. Right. I right. also like that it says make an appointment with your doctor or tobacco specialist for advice as well, too, because I think that's very, very important as well, too. You making the decision to do it, obviously, for sure, go see a doctor and let him know that I'm at this stage of my life where I feel really bad. My, I'm very heavily dependent on nicotine. I'm very heavily dependent on smoking and the delivery method and so forth. So that is really, really sound advice. You know, it, it, go ahead. But, but, is uh, there a but it also says tobacco specialist. OK, keep in mind, because these shops in France that we're talking about, that these 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 alpha liquid shops they are more of a tobacco specialist than they are a vape shop you know they try to be your support system and answer all your questions and also provide you with this because further down you're going to see it has more information on what you're going to experience to give you more support even from a medical standpoint of what to expect your body to expect when you quit smoking and you know it, it's interesting there that they say in addition to a tobacco specialist, but they say, see a doctor. Okay. Now there in the EU where this vaping is much more embraced than it is here, uh, they're probably going to get, you know, some, some good, fair, reasonable um, advice on vaping yeah. here. I don't know how much you're going to get, you know I mean? Cause the, the doctor isn't going to make any money. If he says, go try a vaping device, Correct. the doctor is going to make money. If he says, well, try a patch or try Chantex or try this or try that. Right. Because of, you know, big farm and the kickbacks. So here, I'm not sure how that well that will work. There are, right? there are doctors that are sending their there patients, are. especially with COPD. But let's hope you don't get to the stage where you go COPD. And listen, if you go to a doctor and it tells you that vaping is much more less, uh, much more harmful than cigarettes, go just leave. I mean, just doctor. don't let him do anything because <laughs> that's really. I mean, I don't know anybody that can take the um, uh, in Greek they call it Hippocrates uh, oath as a doctor to to heal and and help their patients and spew such lies simply from a pharmaceutical profit can, standpoint. Can, can I get the name of that oath again? What was the name Hippo, of the oath? Hippocra uh, Hippocrates oath. I don't, know. I, don't know. I don't know what the English word is. It's, it comes from a Greek, the Hippocrates, the Greek guys. So, so. The Hippocratic oath? That, is that the oath you're talking about? Yeah, okay. I swear, I swear. <laughs> so anyway, but you know, you understand what I'm saying. You, you, get, you catch my drift. So, oh, yeah, I totally do. I, 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 I speak Dimitri, yeah. This is awesome right here. This love right this here. Part. This love, is, love, love yeah. this part. Yeah, yep. yeah. So go ahead, Phil. All right. So we were talking about, you know, um, you know, keep keep your partner, keep your significant other, keep your loved one off of cigarettes, uh, and and things are gonna start to change. How fast do they change? This is how fast they change. Within 20 minutes of no tobacco, your blood pressure and heart rate return to normal. Okay. Within eight hours of no tobacco. The quantity of carbon monoxide in your blood is halved, halved. Cell oxygen, oh wait, I, I'm having a problem with this word. Cell <laughs> it's, 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 oxygen, oxygenation. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's addicting, oxygen. it really is. Okay. <laughs> Return, that stuff right there, it yeah. returns to normal, mm -hmm. okay? Um, within 24 hours without tobacco, I love this, okay? Your risk of a heart attack is reduced your lungs start to eliminate the smoke residue and mucus caused by smoking. A lot of people, when they quit cigarettes and they start vaping, uh, th th they'll cough. They'll cough and they'll cough stuff up. Uh, that is a very, very good cough. That is very, very good that that stuff is coming out, right? Uh, it's your body healing itself instantly. And once again, here's something to expect so you don't get caught blindsided. You're like, oh, my God, I'm coughing so much while I'm vaping, like, you know, 20, uh, 48 hours after, 24 hours after. This is exactly what's happening. It's just your body ex ex expelling all this residue and mucus that was built up. Oxygenation. There you go. You got it. Thank you very much. 48 hours without tobacco, your sense of taste and smell improve. Your nerve endings for taste start to grow again. How awesome is that? And we talked about um, it at the beginning of the show with the flavors as well too, right? 
We did. But I mean, that's how quickly it happens. Mm -hmm. That's how quickly it starts to happen. 72 hours without tobacco, you'll find it easier to breathe. Your bronchial tubes start to relax and you've got more energy. This is unbelievable. This is great. This is such good information. It this really is, is, you know, th this is what this this is the stuff that that, you know, where's Carolyn? Carolyn, <laughs> show your husband this stuff. OK, this is the important stuff. Two weeks to three months without tobacco, you won't cough as much and you're not as tired. You're getting your breath back. Love it. So, so I, I change, change yeah, gears. Here yeah, we will. Bit. I just want to touch a little bit here again on this yeah. and this this I like I love the you know the little visuals that they have here you know to to the left of the of the statements that they're making and all that i just think it's absolutely wonderful because once again you're not at the vape shop let's say it's on a sunday when you're reaching your 72 hours tobacco free and you experience something you don't know exactly what it is boom you can refer back to your handbook and say oh also this is the most important part as well too you can set goals for yourself and you feel like you've reached them right so you can say okay I'm just going to focus on the next 24 hours not to have a cigarette, and I'm just going to vape exclusively. So now you've set yourself a goal. And what do you expect in those 24 hours? Once you reach those 24 hours of no cigarettes, you say to yourself, oh, my God, right off the bat, 24 hours, I've done it, and now I feel better, or I've done this to my body. And, and it's, it's a way of rewarding yourself by yourself in your journey using – I'm getting so excited about it. I'm getting so passionate about it because I think it's fantastic. It's, it's really – it's a really, really good thing, and I, every vape shop in the United States should be doing this, and every every smoker that's attempting to 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 quit should be using this as well too. Right, and you can get a, you can reward yourself too. Like when you hit that twenty minute mark, get a little tattoo of Dimitri. Yeah, that'd be great. When you hit, when you hit the forty eight hour mark, a little tattoo of Phil right over here. You know, whatever it takes, whatever it takes. Gold stars. Go and buy yourself something nice. Whatever it takes, guys. Yeah, I, I think I think that if if we reach a hundred thousand um, uh, people on the survey, maybe I'll get a tattoo. Maybe I'll get a tattoo of feel on my body somewhere. Where on your body? <laughs> well, I mean, it's not, it's not gonna be on my forehead, that's for sure. Okay, right. <laughs> but we'll we'll discuss that. Maybe that that'd be interesting. Um, so you know, here they're taking a break from. They're gonna go back to that. I like the way it's laid out as well too. It's not boom, 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 health, health, health. Now they're taking a little break, and they're gonna talk about money. Right. And today's not only, it, not only is it boom, boom, boom and all that stuff, but it's not like in a manual that looks like this. Where right. You can't right. even see like, the, you know, it's just really laid out nice and clear. Yeah. Uh, somebody in the uh, the chat, they were asking if these slides will be available. And I think we can make them available. Yeah. This right? is actually in a PDF format. You can upload it if you want on tasterjuice.com and people can yep. snatch it from there or madgreek at gmail.com. I'd be more than happy to forward it to anybody. Just make the adjustments uh, as you seem fit for your right. business. And uh, hey, listen. Even if you're not a business, if you're a vapor that wants to help three friends, take this, download it, print it, and give it to them. There oh. you go. You don't even have to have a business. This is how fantastic this information, in my opinion, is. Right. So, and just, just to answer that, so at the end of all of these shows, the, the typical um, smoker show slides that we have that we're actually not using tonight, uh, those get posted with the new videos uh, on tasterjuice.com, along with uh, Mr. Mooch's stuff that he gave us. Uh, and we'll put these slides up there as well for you guys. Okay, so uh, I'm uh, hopefully I'll be able to get to that tonight. I, we got to get ready for London tomorrow, but uh, these will definitely these slides will definitely be up and available to you on tasterjuice.com. Okay, absolutely. So money is vaping less expensive than smoking tobacco. <laughs> vaping is generally thirty to seventy percent cheaper. Uh, then what you'd be spending on tobacco. That is an average figure. It depends, of course, on how much you're smoking to start with. And, you know, I really like here that they're using that wide number. And they're not saying, well, you're going to save 5000 a year. Because that's not necessarily true, okay? Right. Well, our experience has been with vaping is that you start off and you can make it as cheap or as expensive as you want. The goal is not to smoke. So if that means you're going to turn into whoop, this as a hobbyist and start buying devices, of course, it's going to be more expensive than it, you know, it's going to cost you more. And they have that wide range for that reason, depending on which route you're going to take. But you can make it, you can make it as cheap as possible as well, too, if you follow, let's say, the example that they have here. Right. And, you know, just to expand on that, Dimitri, I mean, if you're if you're an enthusiast, if you're a hobbyist, <clears throat> if you have to have every new device that comes out, even though it did or does all the same things as the last device that came out. But, you know, this one has a different shape or different colors or different lights. So you have to have it. Uh, if you have to have every tank that comes out, if you have to have everything that comes out, 
chances are no, you're, you're not going to save money with vaping. You, vaping is going to be more expensive for you, but yeah. it doesn't have to be that way. It doesn't have to be that way because devices that came out years ago, uh, we'll give you an example. The, the Aspire Nautilus is a perfect example, right? Still just as satisfying today as it was back then. And uh, let me give you uh, let me give you another little piece of advice or something that, that is a, it's a way that I look at things. Okay, <clears throat> vaping has evolved. Okay, over the several years. When I started vaping in two thousand and nine, even before that, two thousand and six, vaping today is much different than it was back then, okay? So vaping has evolved, tanks have evolved, wattages have evolved, devices have evolved, but you know what hasn't evolved at all? What hasn't changed from 2006 when vaping kind of really started to today? Smoking. Smoking hasn't evolved at all. Smokers haven't evolved. How they smoke has not evolved. So in reality, the needs of the vapors may have changed and grown and, and moved on a little bit, but really the needs of the smoker are exactly the same today as they were so many years ago. And we have to keep that in mind, right? Yes. Yeah, sorry. I was muted. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry. I was muted because I was typing and I have this RGB uh, keyboard here and it's very, very loud. All right, let's move on. You have to, you have to remember when, when it comes down to saving money. Okay, you do have, um, you, you do have a parts of your your vaping gear, your vaping supplies that that are um, disposable. Okay, or you need to replenish. Those are typically going to be your liquids uh, and your coils yeah. and maybe your batteries. Okay, right. but, you and know the device itself, the tank itself, it should last you a really long time. And you know, should you want to make vaping economical, it is absolutely possible to do that. And much more economical than smoking. On point. On point, exactly. And I like how on this particular breakdown that they have, they actually take that in consideration. Like, you're going to buy two vaping devices in a year. Now, I know what you're going to say. There's some vapors in the chat that buy two vaping devices a week or some every other day. I get that. But this is just an example of what you could possibly save doing it with an average cost, okay? So if the average cost of cigarettes is between 6 to 11 euro, as you see here, this is European, you can adjust those figures based on what your state is, okay? You can adjust those figures based on what you pay for cigarettes in your particular state. This is what's going to cost you per year. So on the basis of smoking 20 cigarettes a day, what's it going to cost you? It's going to cost you between 2,100 to 4,000 euros a year. It cost me and my wife... Um, if I'm not mistaken, it was 50 a week, um, 400. It was $4,500 a year to smoke. That's what it cost when we quit. A carton, uh, a piece a week. So this is what it's going to cost you for vaping. Again, this is a European figures, 30 euros for a starter kit. And by that, it could be an AIO. It could be uh, an Inkin T22. It could be a Joytech, um, a small starter kit with a GSR tank or whatever. About 30 euros. About 16 euros of for the coils to use with this first vaporizer. 50 euros for a device that's a bit more efficient, lasting at least six months. So they're taking into consideration that you're buying another device that's a little bit bigger. And then 50 euros for coils and various accessories. And about 920 euros for e-liquids. And this is on the basis of using three bottles a week, which is about 30 meals a week of higher, obviously, nicotine. This is what this is basing it on for somebody that is converting right that is that is a smoker coming into vaping right so once again what you're going to save is anywhere between 11 to 3000 depending on how those figures are going to change you might buy a little bit extra coils you might buy a little bit of liquid but overall vaping there is no doubt there's absolutely no doubt and even today in today's vaping market that it is way way cheaper than smoking and by the way, just to convert those figures to, to U.S. dollars, that equates to about twenty five thousand dollars. <laughs> it does. You guys know that the euro, okay. the euro is getting is killing us right now. It's yes, killing me, yes. man. I got to go to Greece next week. Um, <laughs> uh, another little uh, nice thing that they did here, and this is more of your specialty feel, is they actually took you know a suggested uh, vaporizer that they use in their stores. It could be anything that you use. We suggest that you use the Zenith tank, but that's just us, you know. <laughs> um, but this is just, you know, what they're suggesting in their stores, and they kind of break it down, Phil. They do. They break it down. Break it on down. Yeah. So, I mean, it, and we're actually going to break this down. If we get time, we're going we're gonna to show this product uh, in the show. This is the Ego AIO, right? Mm -hmm. So, we see, we see the drip tip, and then we see the, the airflow controller there. 
And then Dimitri gets his mouse to move down a little bit further. And we see the other uh, coil, the, uh, the, the, the coil head. And we see the tank that is included in the device, AIO, all in one. So the tank is built into it. We see the button, the button for on and off uh, function. We also can change the color with the button. Uh, we see the battery, which is included in this device. So it does have a built-in internal uh, battery. And then look what it says there. Ask for advice in store. Yeah. Ask for Now, by the way, if you take, you know, like this device, you're interested in this device and you walk into a vape shop and you say, can you show me this device? And they say, well, we have something similar. And they hand you a 200 watt mod with a, uh, you know, uh, like a baby beast. It's not similar, guys. It's it's not similar. Uh, you know, they're, they're trying to upsell you. They're trying to change uh, what, what you're interested in. Uh, they're, they're, they're changing the style that you might be interested in. It is really up to, to the shop to to identify your needs as a vapor. It, it, it really is. Before before we get uh, moving on to the next page, uh, I just need uh, just a quick break and we'll be right back. Oops, sorry, that ended and I did not stop it. There we go. We're we are back. All right. So uh, thanks to Inakin, that's uh, one of our sponsors, and we're gonna move on to the next uh, slide. I will let you take care of this one, Phil. And this one is a little bit more into detail of you know you know it, again they they try to break it down. They they have breaks in between this 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 whole booklet that they give you just kind of to get your mind off it. Don't overload you with one piece of information constantly one after the other because you know i mean the attention span of a smoker you know it's it's, it's not it's just not there overload of information i think is bad oh i got you muted i'm sorry <laughs> i'm sorry phil start again i'm sorry oh my god what is that okay w which by the way we did in the first few episodes of the smoker show but there was a lot of information to go through right sure. but you can see here <clears throat> to start vaping the first thing to buy is a personal vaporizer mm -hmm. right we call them, what do we call them here? Um, E-liquid. E um, EVPs, E-liquid vapor products. Thank you. Uh, to buy a personal vaporizer. This consists of a battery, an atomizer, which has the cotton uh, and coil, uh, a tank to hold the liquid, and a drip tip or, or a mouthpiece. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, the personal vaporizer comes with a USB cable for charging. Uh, that may or may not be the case, depending on which one you get. Um then you select your e-liquid. We recommend using beginner's e-liquid uh, equipment for vaping using original Alpha Liquid Collection. Of course, they're going to do that, which has a 76 to 24 PGVG ratio. How about that, Demi? Yeah, that's pretty amazing. That that, right. that that's what they're recommending. Absolutely. <clears throat> um, and, and you know, we we could talk a little bit about why that is, but we'll we'll touch on that later on. Sure. Uh, the Ego AIO, for example, is really easy to use. That's the uh, the device that they uh, showed earlier uh, in the document. Uh, fill the tank of your clearomizer with your e-liquid and press the on and off button of your personal vaporizer to turn it on. Make sure the first time you fill it, leave the clearomizer in at least 10 minutes to leave the cotton wick long enough time to soak up the liquid. We call that priming. You can do that certainly faster by manually priming the coil or you can let it soak or you can take dry puffs. We talked about this all in previous episodes. Sure. Press the button as you breathe in, then breathe out, okay? So you're pressing the button, you're using it like a cigarette, you let go of the button, the device stops. So that's one thing, the difference between a cigarette and most devices. Uh, some devices are automatic, what we call automatics, which means they turn on when you begin to suck, they turn off when you stop sucking or drawing. I should probably call it drawing, not sucking, mm -hmm. right? Sure. Um, and, but most of them are manual. You need to push a button. And then watch out, watch out. Vaping isn't the same as smoking. You need to leave eight to 10 seconds between each intake of breath 
to give the e-liquid enough time to rise up in the coil, okay? So they're giving you a little warning there about the wicking of your device, right? Some devices don't wick as fast as others. Um, so they're giving you a little help. They're, they're doing some potential troubleshooting there. We could give you more troubleshooting tips because there are certain things that you run into when you're vaping, but they're giving you a little bit of troubleshooting right there. Yeah, and I saw a comment in the chat that we can't find more than 50-50 here. Listen, just adjust this to 50-50. It really doesn't make any difference. This is what they're using there. And you can make the adjustments based on the products that you're selling here or the liquids that you can find. You can actually find higher PG here liquid if you if you if you if you know where to look. I do want to bring this up as well too. This is a very very important thing that they put on the bottom, and you see it has a little assistance on the side. Great information. Make yeah. sure you have a spare charger or even a spare personal vaporizer because running out of battery is the main reason to bounce back. And it's absolutely true. I've heard that many times. I got it and it died. It didn't have enough battery. I couldn't get through the entire day. So I actually had to go and smoke a cigarette to get my nicotine inside as well, too. And that yeah. is you basically falling off the train while you're making that attempt to quit. And I think they did they did a really outstanding job of trying to catch everything with this pamphlet. Yeah. Um, not going into as much detail as 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 maybe required for some, but like a high enough level and really trying to capture everything that you would need to think about when you're transitioning. Yeah. Let's move along here because we got a lot we got a lot a lot to get to and we're we're going to be running out of time. I'm not going to okay. spend a lot of time on this uh because obviously this is the liquids that they sell, but I do like the fact I do like that the fact that they've taken the time to explain exactly what e-liquid is in this day of time of fear-mongering propaganda of oh, vaping is toxic and cancerous and this and all the the bad stories that we're hearing in the media which are completely false and fabricated. They have taken the time to exactly explain to you what exactly goes into their liquid, okay? From the PG that they're using, you know, uh, why is it, why is it like, <laughs> from the PG that they're using to VG, the aromas, the different flavors that they're using, ethyl alcohol, which may be present in some flavors, that's actually in the flavoring that they're using to keep the final mix of the fluid, and then the nicotine soothes people who are dependent on it. It may or may not contain nicotine as well, too. Uh, we've, we've said that in, in, in various time. So... Here we go. Now they're going back. Now they're going back to the answers that you had earlier. What is the right nicotine content for you? And again, this is just a suggestion based on how many cigarettes you smoke a day. And you can see here they're making the nicotine suggestions based on your consumption of combustible tobacco now. Right. But I do like how they break it down here. Okay. I like how they say these are just suggested, but you're not obligated. Okay. You're right. not obligated to adhere to this. It's just an indication for you to get started. If you need more, vape more. If you think it's too much, then you can lower it or vape less as well, too. And it also tells you what to expect if you, if you, or basically what we call over nick, if you um, consume too much nicotine e liquid, you might feel palpitations, headache. I actually said that word right off the bat. Did you see that? You did. And you did congratulate me. Yeah. Headaches and sweating, those are, could be signs. It's happened to me a few times as well, too, of overconsumption of nicotine. So the best thing that you can do is lower the strength. And once again, if you do have these symptoms that are persistent, it could be something possibly else. So it's better to con conduct, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, talk to your doctor. <laughs> Sorry. But why is my mouse freezing? That is really, really pissing me off. Uh, again, I'm not going to spend too much time on this over here, but this basically tells you some of the stuff that you can get started based on the, this company, on the Alpha Liquid Company. You can make the adjustments here based on what you want. But of course, you know, they're suggesting tobaccos, uh, very, very soothing fruits, very mild, uh, sweet tobacco, darker spices, and so forth and so forth. Again, right in between that, another little assistance card. This can let you, you know, you might dry up. So it's very, very important that you keep hydrated and have more, more water. Um, I'm just going through this field very, very, very quick. They're just, yeah, no good. They're just talking about, you know, there are other ranges that they have. Uh, this is like right up my alley over here. I actually tried the glacial mint. And it was pretty, pretty good. Uh, this, these are all menthols in case you smoke, you know, methanol cigarettes. And, you hey, know. go up there a little while. Oh, okay. Go up there a little bit. Go up a little higher. Hold on. The other way. Okay. I'm sorry. It's. It's for some reason well, that oh, it's, I, I didn't it's, know that was going to be a big deal. I'm sorry. No, what it is, I've I've made this PDF really really big and it's uh, uh -oh. it's lagging a little bit. Go ahead. Can you can you go down just a little bit? Oh now? yeah yeah yeah. Because I, I see the uh, the flavor there, chlorophyll. But I, I know you've used chloroform <laughs> yeah. on some people. Like, that's different. That's, that's what I wanted to that say. That is okay. completely different. Thank you. Right, go ahead and carry Boy, that on. Was, now. Thank that you. was a very long way to go for a joke. That really was. <laughs> so. 
So again, these are just some of the stuff that they carry, which is also again and a little assistance. Make sure you always got an emergency bottle of higher. This is what exactly what Phil told you earlier. Exactly what I told you. Exactly. If you have that time where you feel that you got to have a cigarette, you're stressed out, or in the morning when you have your coffee, or after a meal, or after sex, or whatever it is, that time that you really need to have it, have some higher nicotine strength that you can bet. That way you don't have to go back to smoke. I think they may have even stolen that from me. I think maybe. Yes, they might have. Uh, And and I'm going to let you take over here, Phil, because this is something we never see in vape shops here in the United States. This is really... This is my one of my I have a lot of pet peeves in this industry, but this is one of my biggest pet peeves as well, too, because there is no education about vaping etiquette. OK, just because you pick up a vaporizer doesn't necessarily mean you're going to go out there in public and just, just start blowing clouds on people. OK, so they've actually done a fantastic job to include this as well, too. So take it away, Phil. OK, so responsible vaping means thinking about other people, yourself as well and, and the people around you. OK, very. This is this is important stuff, guys, you know. Because look, look at the output from a traditional tobacco cigarette and look at the output from even a mouth to lung vaporizer. There's a lot more output from a mouth to lung vaporizer, a lot more output from, you know, a a cloud chasing device. And you really need to be respectful and responsible um, for the people around you, because, you know, number one, it doesn't look good. Number two, you know, it, it might smell bad to them. You know, just be be courteous. Think about people. Can I vape at work? Um, Each country has different rules about vaping at work. It's up to the vapors to be aware and to be considerate about the comfort of people around them. And keep this is this is European based as well, too. So keep that in mind. We can make the adjustments here. I can say states and so forth. Okay, you can make the adjustments. Right. Am I allowed to vape in places that are open to the public? Uh, most countries allow vaping in places that are open to the public, restaurants, cafes, bars, stadiums, hospitals, etc. cetera. Uh, not so many in the U.S. Mm-hmm. Make sure you keep up to date with changes in regulations, okay? Uh, I'm pregnant. Can my partner or other family members vape in the home? To date, there is no study that shows the uh, effects of passive vaping, uh, although I believe there are now. Um, your family members who prefer to use a personal vaporizer to stop smoking present less of a risk to the people around them uh, than if they continue to smoke ordinary cigarettes. However, you could ask them not to vape in the same room as you, and you should ventilate your home regularly. Uh, I can tell you, folks, when I ever go into anybody's house, even like people who I know vape, uh, I always ask them first before I start vaping. Always. Yes. Yes. Okay. It's just a considerate and right thing to do. Um, where am I not allowed to vape? Uh, most countries don't allow vaping in the following places, enclosed public transport, underground transport, uh, trains, buses, schools, and other places attended by minors. Uh, you know, here in the States, most restaurants too, um, uh, most bars, you just have to know what the rules are in the, pe- the place that you are. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, what are the penalties for breaking the law? Um, Dimitri comes to your house and you yes. really don't want that to yes. happen. Yes. If you break the law, you can expect to be punished according to the laws of the country. Sure. And there are there are even states here that do have punishable offenses if you do vape in a, in a space where it's it's prohibited. Keep that in mind. It could be a uh, This is a really good one, Phil. Obviously, uh this one is not for me and you, but it's a question that we do get a lot, okay? Right. And, and again, it might be for you. Uh, <laughs> so stop stop smoking ordinary cigarettes is the best way to protect your baby's health during Uh, your pregnancy and later on, you must stop smoking ordinary cigarettes right from the first stages of pregnancy. I think we know that, right? Um, Go ahead and go down a little bit further there. Not many studies have been carried out on the dangers of using a personal vaporizer during pregnancy. While it's true that a personal vaporizer doesn't produce the harmful substances present in ordinary cigarettes, carbon monoxide, tar, arsenic, all of those fun things, uh, and is therefore less harmful for pregnant women than ordinary cigarettes, there is so far no study demonstrating that the components for uh, or of e-liquid do not present any risk for the fetus, okay? So no studies yet. No studies yet. No. Uh, I mean, y- y- what, what can you say? I mean, I, I have uh, several friends who actually vape during their pregnancies. I have friends that smoked during their pregnancies. They just didn't care, yeah. right? But um, you just keep that in mind. But I, so I, the, I do like how what they're saying here on this next paragraph as well, too, because if we're, if we're comparing it to NRTs, right? Right. right. The nicotine contained in e-liquids is not a problem since the nicotine substitutes authorized for sale, including patches, gums, and inhalers, are recommended by midwives and increase the chance of being able to stop using tobacco. 
It doesn't matter what method you choose, it's important to stop and to ask for professionals' help. The personal vaporizer isn't recognized as tobacco cessation treatment and therefore can't be prescribed by a health professional. And right? they actually uh, cite a source here, documentation, smoking and pregnancy challenge group as well, too. So it's really nice that they have that information as well, too. And there are a lot of pregnant women that just can't quit smoking. And, they, you know, if you can't quit smoking, obviously, the best thing for you to do is to switch into a vapor product as well, too. If you use right. no nicotine but as basically well, what they're, mm -hmm. basically what they're saying there is that the nicotine isn't the problem with with complicating a pregnancy. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Uh, so the follow up is basically, you know, when well, you can see the benefits, this it just explains it a little bit more into detail of what your body is going to go through as you're making these changes. And again, it's a lot of really great information here. And I'm kind of fast forwarding here. But sure. um, th this is exactly the support, right? To support you in giving you giving up cigarettes, we offer your personalized follow up in store. So they're giving you this booklet. If you need more, okay, if you need more then you go back to the store to get some more support uh, that, that you're going to need uh, as a support group as well, too. Uh, Jesus, this mouse is so annoying. I don't really think it's the mouse. I guess it's just a PDF because I'm going towards the end as well, too. Okay. So uh, this right here, Phil, if I'm not mistaken, this is um, so annoying. This is basically a self, right? Yeah, this is this is for you to track your, uh, right. your progress, right? Right. Track your progress, and also to uh, to to bring this back into the uh, the vape shop, and they mm -hmm. can pass this information along to uh, to your medical professional. Right? Sure, and also so, an employee can take this information and maybe make some adjustments based on what you have you progressed in the first week. Right, right. So you can see here, week one, day. I'm still smoking X cigarettes per day. Um, give you give you uh, information on uh, the liquid, your PG VG ratio, the nicotine strength. Does it suit me? Yes or no. So again, great information for you to bring back to a quality vape shop and say, okay, let's, let's work on this a little yes. bit. What can we change for you? What's going to work for you? Um, it gives you your equipment, your difficulties, your achievements, uh, a motivation marking for yourself and what you plan on doing for the next coming week. Terrific stuff. Really, really terrific stuff. Yes. And uh, I, I really like that they go on. This is week two again. It mm -hmm. just continues to, to, to try to motivate you to, to stay on target and do exactly what you need to do to be able to quit smoking. It goes to week three, and then I think it turns into one month, and after one month, I think it follows up. Again, I apologize for this. It's just a PDF. It's so big that I've, uh, I've, uh, I've uh, enlarged it. Two months, yep. uh, and then I think it goes down to six months, if I'm not mistaken. Then I think it goes actually up to a year. So you can you imagine, not only does the vape shop gather data on the equipment that they're selling, on the liquid they as a shop owner, this is very valuable information for you to make adjustments to your stock as well, too. Think about that, which you're helping somebody quit smoking and also you're getting very valuable data from the, you know, for, 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 from your consumer base, from your customers. And, you know, at the end of the day, are you getting support from the people around me? It's got little smiley faces here or sad faces or, you know, that the support around you is very, very important. If, if your husband is making fun of you because you're vaping, you don't feel that you're getting the support that you actually need to quit smoking. So I think that's very, very important as well, too. Yeah, you know, it's even like we said, you know, it's, it's great information for a shop to, to fine tune and tailor, you know, what you're doing. But, you know, how good it would, it would it feel to that vapor if, you know, they actually they, they went through and they filled out their card and they brought it into the vape shop. And, and the guy came out from behind the, behind the counter and shook your hand and patted you on the back and said, you know what? Really, really great job. I'm so proud of you. You're doing fantastic. Look, here's a, here's a bottle of e-liquid that doesn't sell in my shop anymore. But here you go. Take it. Yeah. You know, just a little a little award, a little prize for you. You know, anything like that, anything like that, anything that we could do to keep people motivated and engaged and and, and excited about not smoking anymore. That's a good thing. So uh, the next section that they're going, this is the end of it as well, too, is FAQ. I mean, this is something, again, uh, when you're by yourself at the house and you're like, oh, my God, what happened? My e-liquid tastes burnt, right, Phil? Yep, yep. And uh, here, they're, they're again, they're trying to do some troubleshooting for you. The burning sensation has absolutely nothing to do with your e-liquid. Uh, it comes from your equipment. Uh, we recommend you change the coil on your personal vaporizer regularly every three to six weeks, depending on your equipment. Um, I would even go a little, bit, a little bit sooner than that. But I mean, it could be a lot of things. It could be wicking issues. It could be a bad coil. It could be you're running your coil uh, too hot. It could be a lot of things. So they're giving you just a general recommendation there. Um, and, and, and I think you if, you're, if you're using 76% PG liquid with no sweetener, it'll probably last you three weeks. <laughs> <Of> <laughs>
of course. And, and there's another assistance block there. Demi, take that one. It's not the same as smoking an ordinary cigarette. So, you know, you don't want to, you know, I, I, I say this all the time now with the pod videos. You don't want to draw on it too quickly. You don't want to take, you know, you don't want to go back to back to back until, you know, you know, you have a device that can actually handle chain vaping as we call it as well, too. So slow down and let the vapor come into your mouth and just enjoy it. Yeah, let me, let, let's go back out to us here for a second, Demi, because I'm going to get a little bit angry right here for a second. Sure. Um, to uh, to Andrew, Andrew uh, Rattle. Yes, this is noob. That is the purpose of this show, Andrew. Okay, so if this is a little bit too noob for you, don't watch the show. This show is for smokers, and this show is very welcoming to smokers and for people who don't understand what we're doing, okay? I don't look at those people as noobs. I look at them as somebody that we should be welcoming, somebody that we should be taking care of, somebody we should be answering the questions for, and somebody we should be welcoming into vaping and supporting them in every way we possibly can. So, Andrew, if this show is too noob for you, I do respectfully request that you change the channel, okay? Very well said. Uh, now you know how I feel. What's the difference between natural aromas and synthetic aromas? I think this is a little bit more of a diving into the company Alpha Liquid, of course. You know how they uh, they actually create flavors for their liquids as well, too. If their products are made in France, Gaia Trends obviously is the company that makes it. And again, continue. What's the difference between an ordinary cigarette and a personal vaporizer? You know, one produces smoke, the other one produces vapor, and everything that goes along with each one of the two. Uh, why do I cough is something that you're going to experience, obviously, in the first two weeks of uh, vaping, especially if you quit completely cigarettes. It's just your body is just, you know, the, the toxins are coming out. And when your toxins are coming out, by coughing is one of the ways that you do that. Can you mix different liquids? Here they're saying you can adjust the nicotine strength, but don't mix different flavors. And I think the reason why they say that is sometimes you think, oh, I'm going to take this coffee flavor and I am going to mix it with, uh, oh, I don't know, I'm going to mix it with uh, pineapple. Right, because you think you know I can put it together together, and then it comes out to be something really, really bad, and you're not enjoying it. That's why I think they're saying stay off the you know mixing the various flavors. Right, and then finally you know, another yeah. thing too about sure. the coughing, Dimitri, sure, and, and sure. I know we've said this in past shows, but I've been I've been talking about this a lot, especially to uh, to people that I talk to, you know, at the shows and stuff like that. You know, I gave this vaporizer to a friend of mine, and they tried it, and they coughed a lot. They coughed, and they they put it back, and they said, "Oh, that's terrible. Give me my cigarette." Right. Yeah. But always go back and try to remember that first cigarette that you smoked. Right. That first, the first time you took that inhale and you breathed it into your lungs, did you go, oh, that's wonderful? No, you probably coughed your lungs out. Right. But somehow, for some reason, you went back and you had another puff and then you went back and you had another cigarette. And then eventually, all of a sudden, you didn't cough anymore because you got used to it. OK, so potentially that is something that you might experience. A lot of my friends coughed when they first started vaping. But they work through it. They work through it. Now they feel a whole lot better. They don't cough anymore. Uh, and it's a win-win. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, can uh, What difference does the PGV duration make? I really like that they have included this as well, too. I wish most, more, more of the shops here in the U.S. did it. Basically explaining to you what the difference is and what you can expect. You know, the, the, the PG is a flavor enhancer. It does give you more of a throat hit. And you, you're going to find that you're going to enjoy the flavors, especially at the beginning when you can't taste much. You're going to enjoy them better. The VG obviously produces some more dense vapor, uh, and that's more for the advanced vapor as well, too. Not saying that some of this new cannot use a higher VG liquid, uh, but they're explaining what the difference between two. The DMD is basically the expiration date, okay? This is what, because uh, it says boodle here, and I was kind of funny. I was like, feels boodle. My <laughs> but, boodle. <laughs> your boodle. Like my boodle. <laughs> your boodle brings all the vapors in the yard, buddy. The date of minimum durability, <laughs> DMD. Uh, what they're saying is that, and I really like this as well too, you, I mean, it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to have any health risk, even if you vape something that's expired like two months ago, but you are going to lose some of the potency of the nicotine, and of course, some of the flavor might diminish as well too. Right. So they do have uh, just a contact here where you can put your information as well too as, as a vape shop, and I, this, the final card on here, this is great. So... If Love you're it. actually having somebody that's holding you by the hand, and I know there's vapors, unlike the previous gentleman that made the noob comment, there's vapors in this chat that really care about smokers. And that's why they're here watching this show, to get the information to pass on to the smokers. This is you, guys. This is you. You want to get something, get on there and write your name on that box, and that's going to be who you are going to be sponsoring to try to help them quit smoking. And I absolutely love I, – I just – I love everything about this this yeah. this booklet, 
And that's why I, 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 I me and Field decided in France, like right, right when we saw it, we're like, we're, we're doing this on the Smoker yeah. Show. This is For exactly sure. what the vape shops need, I think, in today's market, trying to help more people quit, um, quit smoking. Yeah, and and you know I, I I didn't mean to go off on a little rant or a little tangent. I didn't mean to get too angry there, but you know that that that's frustrating to me when I see you know some of the things that I see in chat. And for the most part, everybody in chat is really good, right? But I mean, th this is a place where we want to encourage smokers to come to, right? And we don't want to belittle these smokers. We don't want them to think that oh, because they don't know anything, they don't belong, or because they don't know anything, they're not vapors, or because you vape a little device, you vape this device, you're not a vapor. You got uh, uh, uh. bullshit. Yeah, bullshit. I don't care what you vape. I don't care how you vape. What I care most about is that we get you off of the traditional tobacco cigarettes. That's what I care about. That's what I care about. And nobody should be belittled and nobody should feel self-conscious about what they use. I've had people come to me and say, I don't go to vape shows. Why don't you go to vape shows? Because I'm embarrassed of my equipment. Bullshit. Stand, you stand right alongside of me. We'll walk the vape show together. Me yeah. and you together. Me and you. Okay. Because this is this shouldn't be about your equipment, guys. This shouldn't be about how big your cloud is. This shouldn't be about if you're using a pod or if you're using a big device it, it's it, all of that is irrelevant guys it really this is. is supposed to be about tobacco harm reduction and living maybe a little bit longer because we're getting our nicotine in a healthier way that is what vaping should be all about and, and i think that maybe if we had focused on that from the start maybe we wouldn't be in, in as much trouble as we are today maybe i'm not saying that you know we would or we wouldn't maybe just a maybe. Take, take a deep breath. Enjoy a vape. We're going to be right back. Once again, that is the new Joytech Exceed from one of our sponsors. Uh, actually, it's in my queue for the pod systems to, to do as well, too. By the way, check out Dimitri's reviews now. Mm -hmm. He's doing reviews again. YouTube.com uh, slash Vaping Greek. Now, do, do you have an English interpreter so people can understand what you're saying? I'm using you? subtitles. Okay. <laughs> I'm putting subtitles. Listen, today I, I did a video. I put up like a little vlog talking about the survey, and, and I, I had some winners to draw for some of the giveaways. I have a problem with my Invisalign saying the, the R. So oh, when I try to say roll, roll, like it, it doesn't come out. So I had to do like five takes. And I even screwed it up on the last like I just screwed it up once. I was like, screw it. I'm just going to do it in the video. Did you put it in the video? Good. Yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, some of these devices that are coming out, like the Exceed, have a replaceable clothes as well too. Or the iCard. The iCard will be the next video that I'm going to do that I'm putting up. But... Do these fall into the pod category? This is my question. Actually, it's part of my question of the next video for the giveaway as well, too. Do these, since they have a, a standard tank, you, you know, you don't throw the tank away. You only replace the coil. Do these fall under? It's almost as we need another category. Like, great, that's all we need is another category in vaping. But this is more like a crossover from a it pod is. to a mini kit or a mini mod <coughs> or a mini device. It's somewhere mini. in between there. Mini. 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 Uh, we're getting a lot of comments there. We gotta we gotta cut the music down a little bit. It seems to be too loud on the other video. So oh, now you're telling me now the video's over. <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, well, the, the comments are still running. I, I was looking I was looking at my bar there and it looked like it was 
No, it, well, apparently everybody can't hear now. So, because you blew all their air drums out. So, we'll work on that for you guys. Don't worry about it. So, yeah, it is. It's like a crossover device, right? I mean, if, if a pod has a replaceable coil, it's just a thing. That's, yeah, I guess. I mean, I'm struggling with it. it. What I'm struggling with it is like, where do I draw the line? Since I said I'm going to be doing pods, this came as a pod. And by the way, as soon as you announce you're going to be doing pod reviews, I mean, I, I got pods of the yin yang. <laughs> it's just unbelievable. Uh, I got the U-boat in uh, the other day as well, too, which, by the way, it's in the running for the weirdest name of the year. I mean, I just I just don't get Wait, hold on, hold on, Demi. The music is still playing in the background. Oh, is it? Oh, my bad. Hold on. <laughs> Now you tell. So we're gonna start that whole conversation all over again. Okay. So all right. sorry. Okay. All right. So so we apologize. Um, Dimitri once again pressed the wrong button, but I'm not gonna say that because I know he's in a cranky mood and I don't want to upset him. So but, uh, I don't know why that happened. I should have stopped when I oh, when I moved to the new shot. But anyway, so, it is what it is. Um, um, but 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 uh, so and we know that the music was too loud, so we're gonna fix that. Too. We're gonna yeah. adjust all that, and now we're, we're gonna talk about what we couldn't talk about because the music was so loud. Yeah. And none of so, so the, the, that was the exceed from Joy Tech, one of our sponsors here, and it's going to go into my uh, review queue for the on my pod channel, youtube.com slash Greek. Hold on, they're saying it's still playing, dude. <laughs> no, it can't be. Hold on, guys. Oh, it actually is. It is. It really is. Hold on, I can fix that. We'll do it all over. We'll do it live. <laughs> fix it. Hold on. Hold on. Okay. Is it still playing? Did it stop? I, I don't see it anywhere. It says it's still playing. I don't have anything on here. Everything is, everything is, uh, oh, no, everything is off. It, it looks like off. it's still playing, though. Yeah, they're all saying it's still playing. Okay, hold on. Give me just a second. Stay there you go. Over. I got it. Let's see. How about now? I got it. Is it over? I got it. At least it's, it, I hope it was a good song. I, don't, I can't even, I can't, no, I can't I think, hear it. I think they hate the song. <laughs> I can't, they, I can't hear it on my headphones. I have to they, base it on the bar that's there. Did it stop? Did it stop? Guy? Yay. Okay. I think it stopped. Okay. It. So see, you here, here's me. what we're you saying. Okay. Me, so, um, ladies and gentlemen, another Dimitri Agrafiotis production. Um, so, but we're, <laughs> we're everything see, was going, every, balls, everything was going so well. You jinx me. I know he's in a bad mood and he can lash out at me and I don't want that to happen. Okay. So we're sorry about that. We know the other uh, music was too loud. We'll lower it. And we know that it looped for some unknown reason. Yeah. We'll fix and, and that as well. I okay. had deleted the shot too, and it was still looping. I don't know I, why. I don't know what, what's going on. But anyway, okay. but we got to fix, we got to fix. So, so talk about your pod dilemma. This is an interesting dilemma. Yeah. This Go is ahead. a dilemma. So that was the joy tech exceed uh, that you heard multiple times <laughs> in your, in your, in your stream. And it's going in the queue for my channel, youtube.com slash vaping Greek. I'm doing only pods. But here's the dilemma that I've run across. The iCard, which is the next video I'm putting up, these have replaceable coils. So my question to you is, do, do these fall into the pod category or do they fall into a mini mod or a mini device or a mini starter kit? Because you don't, like the iCard, a hybrid, is it really hybrid or is it crossover? Crossover hybrid. Well, like, so, so my thought is, I mean, if, if if a pod has a replaceable coil head, isn't it just a tank? Because to me, the the pod has the coil built into it. That's the way I look yeah. at it, right? Compact. There's a there's a Chris Johnson just put it in compact. That's a good that's a but again, Chris, yeah, it is a compact, but we do have a uh, we have a compact pod system that's refillable as well, too. Right. Well, so that you throw away whole, the pod. That's the whole difference. Is you throw away the pod on the pods. This one you don't throw away the pod. You throw away the coil. Right. So it is it a replaceable a coil pod? It's a tank to me. Yeah, I agree. But here's my dilemma. I mean, I'm going to review them since they came in, and they're they fall into that same category. But where do I stop at that point? I'm going to start doing star kits. I'm going to start doing this. The whole point of doing pods is trying to keep it focused on that for the beginners and people that are trying to, you know, either the advanced user that's trying to use some higher nicotine uh, content or the beginner, if I recommend it with regular nicotine or salt nicotine. That's the whole idea of the of the pod reviews. But anyway, that's not here or there. I'm going to review them. Uh, but listen, let me tell you something. I got pods of the yin-yang feel. I got pods coming in from every. I got the U-boat. By the way, 
China has run out of names. There's just no other. <laughs> there's just no other explanation. They have done everything possibly for a name for any device that's on the market. This is the U-boat. U-boat. I, aside from you know the, it's very very light in how it works and how it refills. Aside from all that, it's in the running for the worst name of the year. And I'm going to do that at the end of 2018. I am going to do awards and I'm going to do. Uh, so this is in the running. This is actually in the lead right now. But this- actually, the only the only U-boat I want is the watch. The, yeah. the U, there's a, there's an awesome U-boat watch, and I would like that. Yeah. Yeah, it does save money. That's a great thing. It does save money if you're going to replace the coil. So, yeah, it does make sense. Absolutely. From an economical standpoint, it does. But it makes it even harder for a newbie. Okay? Because the whole idea of the pod is that it's so simple. Take it, pop, pick it up, throw it away. Or if it's a refill, pop the pod up, fill it, and put it back in. The pod's done. Throw it. You don't have to take it apart. And the Exceed has multiple parts that you have to take apart and unscrew and take the coil out and then prime it and put it back inside. There's a lot of steps involved. So for a new person... Again, you have to think it in perspective. Don't think it only as an advanced vapor, but think about it as somebody that's a smoker that might be coming into this. And, and, and some of the up. pod systems, I mean, in all reality, okay, are actually more difficult to work with and to fill than some of the standard tanks that we have out there. Yeah. Right. I mean, yeah, you yeah. would agree with that. I do. You've got, you've got smaller parts. You've got these tiny little, you know, um, uh, rubber gaskets and plungers that you got to open up to get the liquid into a tiny little hole. So, um, you know, for maybe for the elderly, maybe for uh, folks with vision problems, maybe for folks with uh, dexterity issues or shaking hands, yeah. um, even though they look simpler, they're, they're not the right solution. So once again, it goes back to the vape shop directing the person to the correct, the correct product. It, it, it really does. Question is, does that classification change when they make that pod cartridge replaceable too, like the eye care too? Again, that's all great questions. And that's why I'm bringing it up because I really don't know where to draw the line uh, personally. But, you know, I consider this a crossover pod. Okay. That's the way I'm going to be addressing it from now on. Anything that's a replaceable coil, I'm going to address it as a crossover pod because, you know, it, it is a pod system actually that pops into this thing. But you take the tank out and you replace the coil. So right. I don't know. I'm a little bit confused. What are the chances the phone lines are going to work? Um, I do. I, I, ha- I, you know, do well, have- I have complete <laughs> and total faith in you and your phone lines working tonight. I do. I do have a, a, a new shot for this as, as well too. Uh, two five zero. You are on the air with Phil and Demon. Can you hear us? Yep, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Can you? Yeah. Oh my God! Look, Phil, I got it to work. Can you hear I Phil? Hear Hold him. on a second. Phil, I can hear him. Can he hear me? Yep, I can hear Phil as well. Oh, see, I so, told you. I told you. I, I knew it. I absolutely knew that that was going to work fine. What is your name and where are you calling from? <laughs> uh, it's Bill here. Oh, hey, Bill. Bill Turling. Uh, I didn't even know. I, I didn't even before, know it was Bill. <laughs> you really didn't know that was him? Yeah, absolutely no. I was just so excited that the phone lines were working. <laughs> Well, I actually wanted to get a hold of you guys because I've been messaging you like crazy to me, but you haven't seen it. Well, I'm... Something to bring a smile right back to Phil's face. A post early on from Buster. Yeah. And if Demi, if you can check your Facebook message, read the one from Buster and watch uh, watch Phil smile. Okay, Buster. Guys, of the two smokers that saw your first show, Andy has since given up cigarettes. Randall has cut his habit by more than half. The show works. That, that's terrific. That is absolutely terrific. That's what we want to do. That's, that's that is the whole yeah. reason, the whole purpose of this show. Uh, I hope we can affect more people positively through it. I really yeah. do. You know, it's um, does this show take up, you know, some of my time? Does it take away from reviewing uh, a little bit? Yeah, it does. Uh, it does. But do I think that this is far more important than showing you the next thing that does all the same stuff as the last thing? I think it is. I think it is. I think this is a more valuable use of my time, actually. Yeah. I'd like to do more of this. I'd like to take this on the road. I'd like to do this in front of, you know, live audiences. I'd like to do this at vape shops. I'd like to do this wherever, wherever we can. I would like to spread the message that, that, that vaping is and, and, and hopefully help people the same way that I feel that this has helped me. I agree. And Bill, where are you calling from? Are you in a bus or something? Or are you sticking your head up on an airplane? (laughs) 
no, I'm on uh, a headset on another phone. Oh, okay, okay. I was just checking. I've, right. got, I've got three phone sets uh, <laughs> happening here. So, And I just want to point out that you've also got one other good, really good question uh, right below that uh, Facebook message as well. I will get to uh, it to check right out as now, well. Bill. Absolutely. Thanks so much. For thank At least we know that the phone lines are. And thanks for your work in the chat, Bill. We appreciate it. Thank you, Bill. No problem. All right, so let's, let's, take thanks, some, uh, let's take some real calls. How about that? All right. Any- uh, yes, we will. 215. Not that, not that no. Bill's call wasn't real. Not no, no, it wasn't. It was It was absolutely real. 215-383-5752. Press 1 when you hear the British lady speaking. That will show up on my board that you're in the queue and that you want to speak. Here's a question for you, Phil. Hi, guys. Great info. I have been vaping for a few weeks now. I'm noticing some sore throat coming and going. Is it related to my 70-30 liquid? I'm assuming that's 70% VG uh on your on your question and listen it's just part i mean this is going to happen so it could be the dryness because you're vaping a lot it could be you know the 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 viscosity it could be the nicotine strength it could be it could be a dry coal i remember phil this is back in the day when i started to vape i was using the cartomizers right and then i quickly figured out that i can refill them Right, because <laughs> I was V two was just raping me. But I, I'm not faulting V two; it got me off cigarettes. You know, I'm always going to be thankful for them. But I went to Vapor for Life, and I got these empty cartomizers, and I was getting the PG liquid. I was putting it in the cartomizer, filling, just letting drops just soak, soak, soak. Well, at the very beginning of doing this, I was vaping on something, and it, and the, it didn't have liquid in it. Right. The liquid had, but I wasn't fully aware uh, that it had ended. So I continued to vape it. So basically, that scry dr- dry burning cotton is what I was inhaling. And I got a really, really bad sore throat, really, yeah. really bad. And I felt horrible. And again, not, not, I mean, I thought it was vaping. I was like, oh my God, what is vaping doing to me? Thank God I went to ECF, man. I went to ECF and I searched it up there and I found that, that same issue that somebody else was having. And I read the questions and, and, you know, I was like, oh shit. You know, I was just like, oh, I can't believe it was that that did it to me. But that is a great question. It could be a, a myriad of things that's causing it. All you have to do is just pinpoint down to what exactly is causing your sore throat as well, too. Yeah. So I, I would, I would, the first thing that I was going to recommend is hydrate. Okay. Because vaping does dry you out. Okay. So uh, make sure that you have some water and you keep hydrated. But uh, I was also going to mention, and this is something that I've mentioned in my videos uh, a lot in the past. I am very, very susceptible to dry, scratchy hits. Okay. Um, when I don't have the proper humidity in my vape, it instantly affects my throat and I get a sore throat. Okay. So that, that's one of the, one of the things that I notice right away. Um, and you know, some devices will do that. They'll vape lighter, uh, than other devices. They won't vape as fully saturated. That's what I call it in the videos as fully saturated as other devices. And when that happens, instantly feel it in my throat. Okay. Yeah. Within two to three vapes, I, I will know I, my throat will become sore. So that is definitely something that, that you should think about and, and you should consider. Absolutely. Seven, eight, zero, seven, eight, zero. Can you close your radio, please? You're on the air. Seven, eight, zero. Can you please lower your radio? Hi. Hello. Hello. Hello, can you hear me? Absolutely. What is your name? Where are you calling from? Hi, how are you doing? This is Ruben. I'm in the chat too, and uh, I'm calling from Canada. Hey, what's up, Ruben? Canada Hi, in the house. Ruben. What's going on? Oh, no much, man. I just want to thank Phil and you for doing this uh, show here. Uh, you guys are the best. Man. You guys are the best, uh, and thank you for doing this for us. Thanks, Ruben. We appreciate that. That's really, really kind of you to call in and tell us. It's uh, It's been a very trying day <laughs> for, for, for both of us today. <laughs> so we always welcome to hear some good news. But, uh, but hey, listen, if we can inspire you and can inspire others to quit smoking and discover this wonderful product, that is a, that is a fantastic thing. Thank you, Ruben. Yeah, thank you very much, Dimitri. Thank you, man. Take care. Uh, the telephone lines are open, and uh, surprisingly, they are working. So aside from the boo-boo with the <laughs> audio that nobody's going to let me live down, everything's been working. My shots have been good. Um, we, we were almost 100% tonight. It's your fault. You jinxed How it. Is it my fault? You jinxed it. You jinxed it. <laughs> 215-383-5752. Press 1 if you have any questions or comments. Let me bring the chat up as well, too. Maybe see if you have any questions over there. Oh, look at that. They're lining up. Five one six five, and I'll take them as they come. Okay, just first come, first serve. Five one six, you're okay. on the air with Dimi and the Italian Stallion. And just making sure everyone can hear me. Yes, absolutely, we can hear you. What is your name and where are you calling from? 
Jimmy and Phil, Sean Taft, how are you? Hey, Sean, what's going on, buddy? Sean Taft from Florida. No, oh, man. Hey, Sean. Yeah, man, it's been a long time. It has been. Hey, I just wanted to give, uh, I just wanted to express my gratitude towards you guys for getting that survey up and running. We had, uh, you know, we had the whole, the whole industry pretty much waiting on that survey. So yeah. hats Thank off you. to you for doing that. Um, yeah, that was a little, little trying yesterday. I was stalking your Facebook page, refreshing, refreshing and seeing if you posted it. And, Trust yeah. me. I know how you feel. I was on pins and needles all day yesterday because I was expecting it to come out yesterday, but I did not do the survey. Uh, Dr. Christopher Russell and Parsalinas and all these people were working on in the back in the, in the background. Even today, I'm hearing some people are having messages with uh, trouble with the links and all that stuff. But it's out there. There's a lot of participation. In fact, I just got a message right now that the servers are being overloaded. So that means that vapors are turning out for it. I would love, I would love to see 100,000 vapors do this survey. It would be a tremendous tool for us to use with the FDA and in our future endeavors as we're trying to promote tobacco harm reduction. Hey, hey Sean, Sean, let me tell well, you a little funny you. story. Sean, can you hear me okay? I absolutely. Okay, Sean, let me tell you a little funny story, okay? So yesterday, um, you know, I, I said, asked Dimitri because I had this video all ready to go. Uh, is the link ready yet? No, they're having some problems. Okay, uh, is the link ready? No, there's, they're doing some fine tuning. So later on in the day, hey, Dimitri, is, is the link ready? Is it going? Yes, Phil, the link is up and I didn't fucking tell you <laughs> because okay. I wanted to hide the fucking thing from you. OK, so so that, yeah, that's yeah, when yeah. I realized that's when I knew it was time to go. OK, sorry. You got to understand, I got 15,000 people on my Facebook. So I, you know, I'm not even going to tell you how many yeah. messages I've had yesterday and today. Like, guys, I'm not hawking the link. I want, I'll be, I want everybody to participate on it. It's just that. I'm I'm bound to the information that's being passed on by the, the, the by the real heroes in this and other people that are doing the actual survey and gathering the data because there's going to be a lot of data for them to to go through and peer review and publish. But hey, it's out there now. Let's get her done. Now let's spread the word. You were you were you were pretty much the sole provider. Like everyone was like, okay, Dimmy, I know, post I know, this, post this. Come I know, on. but the, the, <laughs> oh, the, and another another thing too, another thing too is. Um, we are going to be working um, with, uh, I believe there's 21 state associations that are um, vetted by our friend Fig Ramsey. Yeah. And we're going to be making a big push to help fund these state associations. Fantastic. Um, more will be revealed as some planning goes into play. So. That is that is really good to hear, Sean. I certainly appreciate your your commitment yeah. to the cause. And uh, let's just get her done. Let's just uh, be, let's be around for a while and, and preach the good word, man. We'll always do that, man. Thanks for having Thanks, me. Man. Thanks, man. Have so a great night. We'll there you guys, Sean Taft, everybody. Yeah, we appreciate it. Uh, I, I can't even tell if Phil is back, by the way. Oh, there yeah, he is. He's drinking a little tea. I had to take you off the camera. I didn't want to look at your... Uh... Oops, that's not me. That's the wrong button. Oh, 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 boy. oh, boy. 631, you're on the air with Phil and the Italian Dream. We were uh, we were talking about hydrating. I had to, uh, I had yeah. to hydrate. Hello. Hey, what's up, Phil? What's up, Demi? Not much. Who's this? Hello. Hey, Reaper, what's up, man? Not much. I just want to say, first off, thank you again for sharing all that uh, <clears throat> flavor survey information. I know you took a beating from everyone waiting for it. And uh, great live video going through everything. Thank you, man. Um, and I just want to thank you and Phil again for this. I mean, even me being experienced vapor, which I really shouldn't use that term. Um <laughs> Me being a uh, seasoned vapor, uh, you know, I love going through this and listening to, uh, you know, you guys talk about the beginning vapors and giving advice for that because, you know, I still want to help out people. And oh, when you're not in the shop, you lose uh, track of everything. Um, I do have a question for you guys. Sure. For a uh, beginner vapor, someone who's getting freshly off the of cigarettes, would you recommend using a mixed salt pod system, which I know you're very iffy about, mm -hmm. or a beginner uh, setup with 12 milligram or 6 milligram on a, a low ohm coil? I, I think that's a very, very great, I think that's a great question. And here's how I'm going to answer it. If the vape shop has 12 milligram, <laughs> okay, because you might run into a situation that the vape shop does not have 12, I, I highly suggest they start off with a 12 milligram in the proper setup, which means the Aspire Nautilus tank, the Zenith tank is really good for stuff like that, the AIO, uh, the Aspire Pocket X, some of these devices that actually vaporize 12 milligram efficiently. 
The reason why I say that, okay, the reason why I say that, usually the salt nicotine pods are very, very expensive. Also, it cannot be used like a cigarette where vaping can. So you can vape 12 milligrams throughout the day. If somebody needs more nicotine, they'll pick up the device. If they use it as they use a cigarette with a nicotine salt, they might get over nicked. They might get the sweats. And, and most importantly, it makes it expensive. And the, the lastly, I mean, for me, I mean, I guess that could be objective. The lastly for me is that a vape shop cannot su survive simply on pod sales alone. It's just not going to be there. So it's, it's going to take away the, su the support system that the vape shop is providing. Because you can get pods at a gas station. You can get them anywhere. You don't need anything. You just walk in, buy a four-pack of pods, and you're done. But you're not going to get the support that you get in a vape shop at a gas station or at a, at a you know, even a, some of the smoke shops that are not just very aware of these products or, or a CVS or something like that. So those are the three things that I, and, and feel, feel in here wherever it's necessary, but those are the three things that I think that are most important. Yeah, no, I agree with you. I think it, it depends a lot on the, uh, the, devi the device that you, you have and, and you want to make sure that you're satisfied with that device. So, I mean, if you're going to use a low, excuse me, a low wattage uh, pod type device, um, I think there you want to be almost like at an 18 milligram standard Nick um, or like the 20 to 40 to 50 uh, salt Nick. So I think it really depends a lot on the, the device that you're getting. I think the most important thing, though, is to make sure that the user gets the nicotine that they need, right, to, to make the transition and to make it successful. Uh, I know too many people who are just they're, – they're, they're, they're so fascinated with, like, reducing their nick level sure. that they wind up not being satisfied, and they wind up going back to the cigarettes or sticking with the cigarettes, right? But, um, I mean, you know, again, I started in 2009 with product that would be considered shit. I mean, complete garbage today. Um, with with wicking, with nicotine delivery, with with all of that. Yet, uh, I was able to do it back then with an 18 milligram. And I quickly, even using the same hardware, quickly went down to a 12 milligram, which is kind of where I stayed, right? I mean, that's where I am today. So, um, you know, I, I, I don't... I wish they knew more about yeah. the, the salt nick stuff. I really do. Yeah. But um, I, I would always recommend the standard standard nick yeah. first i mean but if that doesn't do it for you or if you're having a real hard time with the harshness i gave you the example before you know if, if you vape through the harshness and you vape through the coughing eventually it's going to go away right but right. if it's something that you absolutely cannot stand um then the salt nick is a good opportunity because it does um reduce some of that harshness the process by which the the salt nick is made um, decreases the the amount of uh, throat hit and the, the harshness that you get from it, uh, yeah. which is another reason why I'm not a huge fan of salt, Nick, because the way I vape, I like that harshness. Yeah. I need that throat hit. That's what satisfies me, right? So, it, oh, again, yeah. it really depends on... I'm on point eight on the Aries using 12 salt, Nick. Yeah. I mean, uh, 12, Nick. Yeah, and, and you said exactly right. That, I'm, I'm, I'm Again, I'm, I'm giving a plug for Symmetry because I really, really enjoy this liquid and I need to get some more uh, It's because it's quickly running out. It's 12 milligram liquid in the Zenith right now, and it's such an enjoyable vape. I get that thump in the throat. I get my nicotine. The big thing that I want to bring up to you, because I know you're a manager at a vape shop, and by the way, thank you, because I know you did a video as well, too, and you're pushing this really hard out with the uh, Legion guys. I'm not a manager at Man, a vape listen. shop anymore. I actually work for a deal, a quick company. Oh, okay. So, but it, it, with, in any case, it, I do want to thank you, because you guys are pushing really the, 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 the survey out, and that, that we certainly appreciate it. To me, vaping is about self-titration. OK, so we need to teach that to the customers. We need to teach them that this is a product unlike other products that have a dosage. Listen, you're going to take a patch and you're going to put it on there for eight hours. You're going to take it off. You're going to put something else. This product does not work like that because it's pleasurable. Let's not forget that it's enjoyable. Right. So teach the customer or teach somebody that's new to self titrate their body. You need more vaping, adjust your nicotine levels up and down, vape more, vape less, but come to that happy place where you're maintaining your nicotine level throughout the day and you're still enjoying it because if it's not enjoyable, then it's not going to work. Yeah. You know, another thing too about the the, the salt nicks, you know, I, I, I like the fact that, you know, with the Juul, the Juul has probably been successful in, in converting a lot of smokers into vaping, right? The Juul also has some of probably the most responsible and adult marketing and advertising from the vaping industry, yet it's being blamed for like all of these kids using the Juul. So, I mean, if, if, if nicotine salts are, is what it takes 
to get a smoker over to vaping, I applaud it. If nicotine salts are being used by, by people just because they want a head rush, because they want to buzz, because kids want to buzz, then I don't applaud it anymore, yeah. right? So just like anything else, just like anything else in our lives and in this 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 great world that we 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 live in, something good can be used for something bad, right? And unfortunately, that that's what we're hearing a lot, you know, with that. So, I, I, and I guess my other fear too is you start using this really really high nicotine salt and you get that head buzz and you start using it more you and you start get very using dependent it more. On it. And, and all of a sudden you become very like used to it. Well, didn't you just increase your nicotine addiction too? Mm -hmm. Right. And I think that's another reason I went why from 1.5 to two pods of 50 milligram joules uh, a day. A lot did a lot in the vaping industry did as well too. And again, I no, there's no way that we're going to answer this without pissing off somebody. I'm sure. Exactly but, right. but exactly. we have to be fair and balanced in what we're saying. I think that there's a place in the market for it. I still believe that if Absolutely. we, if we as an industry did a better job to provide more products that vaporize regular nicotine better and more, the shops stuck more with that to get people just like we did, I think we'd be at a better place right now. Again, not saying that there's not a place for it. Again, it should be in a, in, in, in managed a little bit different than now we're seeing 60 mil bottles and 120 mil bottles of salt nicotine. It's just it's, it's getting too much in my opinion. But anyway, you make a very, very good point, my friend. Thank you again, guys. Um, much love, and I'm definitely tuning in more often. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. That's that's, awesome. that's really, so really, 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 really kind of you. There goes everybody. Reaper from the, he did a really good video on the on the uh, on this survey as well. Ninety seconds. Uh, we got ninety seconds. You can still call in now if you want to get in a queue. You can call in even if it says ninety seconds. We can actually work through that. So. Two one five three eight three five seven five two. If you want to call in now, we'll be able to take it in the next ninety seconds. If you don't call in, that means we're going to go and pack our bags because we're going to London. We're going back to London for Vape Jam back UK London, this weekend. Vape Jam UK. I, I'm packed. I'm for the most part packed. I, I'm but, not. but I don't have any of my gear packed. Right. Uh -huh. I don't have any of my vape stuff packed. I have a lot of the camera gear. Oh, but guess what? what? The second gimbal didn't come back from France yet because I was a dumbass and I left it there oh, by man. accident. But thank you, Patrick Berdu, for finding that and sending yeah. it to me. So, yeah. yeah, I am without the second gimbal. Yeah. And I do agree. Chris says that, you know, pots can be expensive if you're crushing them. Yeah. Again, it, 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 there's a lot of education that goes with a pot. Are you going to use a pod like a cigarette? Take it out of your pocket. Take three, four puffs, put it back down, don't touch it for another 30 minutes. Yeah, that way I get it. A pot will probably last you two days if you do it correctly. But are people using it like that? Right? So there's a lot that goes. I mean, this is a huge conversation that hopefully one day we will expand a little bit more. And maybe we'll have Chris. I mean, his site, he sells tons of pod systems. I mean, it's probably the most complete pod open and closed liquids I have seen online right now with the ZFO. You're talking about Chris Johnson's ZFO? Yeah, the ZFO.com. It's one of the most complete. I mean, he carries everything yeah. pod. I mean, he's I got actually, a lot of stuff as well, too. I, I actually promised Chris that uh, when I did go back to Rochester, if I do go back to Rochester, God knows I love it here. But um, when I go back, I wanted to, uh, to film uh, him and the changes at ZFO because I know Chris is still very, very focused on uh, the, the transitioning smoker, the beginning vapor, and has the products and the nicotine strengths and and the things that those folks need. So I definitely commend Chris and uh, you know want to talk to more to more more to him about you know his philosophy and what he's doing at the shop. Yeah. So London Vape Jam this weekend will be there Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. I'm leaving Sunday to go to Greece. Phil is leaving Monday to come back to the United States. We're doing a Q and A on Saturday and Sunday. I think it's one thirty on Saturday four o'clock on Sunday. So if you're out there in London and you want to come hang out, ask some questions, give us a hug, squeeze our butts. We'd be more than happy to entertain uh, all of the above. <laughs> right? Yes. Absolutely love it. Absolutely love it. Looking forward to it, guys. It's, uh, it's been a very, very trying day for me today. Uh, it's been a just a very, very rough day, but at least we made it. We did the show. We put the episode up there because I think there's a lot of great information that, that, that you guys can use. And I think it's great information for smokers that are listening. And I know you might be intimidated to call in. It might be intimidating for you to type in the chat, but don't be. Just take the information, absorb it. And please, the main the main the, the main thing here is for you guys to transition and, and to get away from combustible tobacco. And we're gonna keep doing it. I, I love it. I I this is probably my favorite time 
of the vaping industry doing the show with you. For I agree with you, pal. I really do. Did you want a virtual hug? I mean, I feel like you need a virtual hug. I mean, I turn that. You're doing it wrong. Way. Jeez, this way. way. Come on, yeah. Come on. Uh, come on. Go a little bit lower. Go a little bit lower. Go a little bit lower. <laughs> no, it's gay. Oh, that was pretty gay. All right. That was pretty gay. But hey, listen, if you want to see more gay, just check out youtube.com slash <laughs> P. and look at the France video. It was so much fun. It was, it yeah, was, and, we you had know, such to, a great to time. everybody who does watch my, um, uh, my review videos. Uh, I have a video that's actually rendering in the background right now. Uh, it's not a review video, but it is about the uh, the survey where yeah. I interviewed Dimitri. Uh, that is hopefully going to go up uh, very, very soon tonight. And I do apologize for the uh, the lack of reviews lately, but this show, all of the travel, the survey, the fact that I have about 10 people in the house right now for the holidays, uh, for Easter, uh, so we will get back to the reviews, I promise you guys. And I do apologize for the lack of reviews uh, recently. Yes. Let me uh, do this and this. I got. I, I, I really need a technical producer. Can we afford that? We can't afford that. We really can't. We, we need, need a few more sponsors and then we can get a technical sponsors. producer. We get a technical producer on stuff. But listen, I fixed all these shots today because I bought, we, bought, we bought matching computers. We forgot to say. We can't we, make this stuff did. up. I swear to God. We bought matching PCs, right? Do you have yours hooked up yet? I do. I, this is where I'm bright. This is look how good and clear the quality of the picture is. You you have it ready already? Of course. My God, hold on a second. So I'm so, so proud of you. Thank you, buddy. Wait, you don't have yours up? Yeah, I do. Okay. It's right here. <laughs> There's nothing attached to it. There's nothing attached to it. <laughs> So this is one thing about Phil. When he's going to buy something, he does like three days of, of research, which is really annoying to me. But whatever. That's the, that's, that's the difference. So I just want to buy it and go. But yeah, we found... It's really annoying to you until you get to the point where you say, Phil, what should I buy? Yeah, exactly. So he, we did a lot of research. We found these, these Dells with these high power graphics card, you know, for, for video rendering and stuff. So we bought matching computers. So the new computer came in. I hooked it up. I had to go buy an adapter for my one monitor. But anyway, I got everything running. But now... Because I want to keep this a clean slate, so I had to network it between the other computer and move a lot of the stuff here. So this is like a fresh copy of Wirecast with fresh graphics and all that, so it doesn't lag. And I, I, the quality looks good. I mean, I don't know. It looks really good to me. I hope it it's good. good. I hope it's good on the stream as well too. But it's working fantastic. But it was a lot, a lot, a lot of work to to yeah. get done. So yeah, yeah. I ha I like literally like so everything in this room is getting changed. So there's there's new camera equipment coming. There's new lighting coming. There's a faster machine for me to, to render the videos a little bit faster. I have yeah. lighting that's actually sitting on the floor right now. So I have new microphones coming. There, there's a lot of stuff that's going on here. And and th this for me is not only like what I do now, right? But it's also like a passion for me. I love computer equipment and researching yes. product and doing stuff like this. But it, when it comes down to it, it's like I don't have the time to kind of put it all together and make it work. Right. So it's it's a challenge. It's always a challenge. Right. So there's a question. I will go ahead and answer this before we go. Okay. We've, we've, we've answered it in the past as well, too. But shouldn't the goal be lowering the nicotine? This is from Rafael Canato. No. 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 When it, did you it, smoke? It, it, when when did you when you were smoking, did you ever think about lowering your nicotine? No, that shouldn't be the goal. The goal should be for you to be able to get nicotine delivered to your body in a less harmful way. That's exactly what the goal is, to quit smoking. Once you quit smoking, if, you're go if you want to eventually become nicotine-free, a lot of people have that continue to vape zero nicotine. That's great. Is that the goal? Could be your personal goal, but that's not the goal of what we're doing. No. Right. Okay? The, the goal here is to, is to, is to transfer... Uh, you know, you're, you're get rid of the harm, right? To get your nicotine in a less harmful way. Yes. Let me tell you something. I, I've used this before. If nicotine, okay, came in little beans and you, you took these beans and you, you heated them up to the point where you can grind the beans and then you steep water through the beans and you came out with a delicious cafe frappuccino, and that wasn't called caffeine, that was called nicotine, yeah. there would be no problem. Everybody would be at Starbucks and everybody would be happy, right? But that, that's, not, that's not where we get nicotine from. Where nicotine came from, it comes from tobacco, okay? And the tobacco gets rolled up and what other chemicals go in there? And then we light it on fire and we breathe it in, okay? And, and it's that part that's bad. Right. And that's right. where the nicotine kind of got a, an evil reputation. So, you know, the, the first episode of the Smoker Show, we talked about nicotine maybe not being necessarily the enemy. 
right? It's it's the delivery system that nicotine has always been associated with that is the enemy. I'm going to make you can read some studies where there's positive effects of nicotine. I'm going to make sure to say I love nicotine. I'm going to start going to I'm going to to start going to these hearings when I go testify in the state house and in in the Capitol with a shirt that says I love nicotine. That's what I'm going to do. Chris, get on that with a ZFO. I love nicotine shirts. Get on it, buddy. Uh, Listen, uh, what device am I using? I am using the Zenith uh, with the Chroma uh, kit, uh, 12 milligram symmetry in this. And it's just it's a 0.8 ohm coil at 15 watts. And it's just it's just hitting so good right now. I'm just really I'm like, you know, when you have that really, really good vape day and everything's just hitting and tasting really good. And uh, my biggest dilemma when traveling is I, I, I pack my clothes in 20 minutes. It's (laughs) It's packed. <laughs> it's going to take me three hours to go through my stuff to see what to take because I'm going to be gone for two weeks. So I have to plan ahead for liquids Whoa, and all yeah. kinds of stuff like that. It takes me two, three hours to pack my vape stuff. It really does. But, you know, it's, it, it's, uh, it's uh, yeah, the life of a traveling vapor. So, yeah. <laughs> but uh, listen, um, guys, I want to thank you once again. I want to thank our sponsors. They are right down there. Please support them because they support us and we couldn't do this without their help. Of you know, course, getting it, Joy Tech and Five Pawns. Absolutely, thank you guys. absolutely. Thank you guys, and they all believe in having starter kits as well too, which is one of the reasons why we kind of handpick and choose our sponsors as well too, because these guys still put out products that are geared towards the smokers. They're geared towards the mouth to lungs. They're geared to, towards helping people. You know, along with the other stuff that they put out there, they still maintain that focus as well too, and that's very, very important for us for who's going to represent this show. So, anything that you want to add, Phil? Yes. Do you have blue lights behind you now? You see it? Hold on. Watch this. This is really cool. You'll oh, like God. It. He's going to change the color of the lights now. Watch. Here we go. Change the color of the lights. Oh, I know that. why you did that. I know why you did that. that. Yeah, that's more. Oh, why watch, don't you go with Watch, the watch, watch. It can do this, too. Watch, watch. It can yeah, I know. I, yeah. Okay. Look at that. It looks like a Christmas tree. Big deal. Okay. Big deal. I got that, too. I'm going to go back to blue. I, like I think you should go back to pink. I, I think the no. only reason you put the blue lights back there is because Mike Vapes has it. No, I was matching. And, and, and then I got it. I was trying to match you. And now you had to do it too. Right? I, I changed my lights. I changed everything. I'm just trying to improve the quality of my videos. And I'm trying to keep up with the young lads. I mean, it's, it's tough. It's tough keeping up with the young folks. Yeah. And like Danielle, DJ LED, you know, yeah. I mean, you got to spend like a billion dollars on, on camera gear to keep up with him. They're broadcasting uh, at like 179,000 frames per second. I don't know. How I just done. I just really think that you're trying to avoid the pink walls that you have behind you. I think that you, you can't you're see it now. Get, can you see that you're trying to get rid of the pink stigma? You don't want it anymore. Well, it's it's not gonna work, buddy. I mean, if you keep bugging me on my sketchers, I will continue to bug you on your pink. Okay. I got another kit to review in today. Look at that. Oh pink again. I mean, it's just it's just like it's it's nonstop. Like they're yep. sending me the stuff like, you know, I mean, it is what it is. You gave it to me, I'm gonna I'm gonna own up to it. All right, guys. There you go. Fire back. I appreciate you guys hanging out. Thanks to our sponsors. Thanks for you guys for listening. And remember for twenty eighteen, help one person quit smoking. One, one for twenty eighteen. And you're going to make a difference. Thanks, guys. We appreciate it. Thank you very much, everybody. Come on. Is this where you click stop? Oh, by the way, the Zenith kits are available for uh, just message me and I'll tell you where you get them if you want them for for the shop. Yes. Why isn't it working? I don't know. There we go. It worked. (laughs) It took a while, but. Ha, 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 ha.